Blessings to everybody. Blessings to everybody. Come on up in here, man. I just want to fellowship with my people one time. Hold on, let me set this up. Here we go. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Blessings to everybody. I hope y'all feeling good. How was your day today before I even get started? What type of day you having? How you feeling today? Hold on. Shout out to all the ladies and the fellas coming up in here. I'm going to give you some time to get up in here. Okay, let me do this uh, for him. There we go. All right, hold on. There we go. Make sure you come in hitting the like button. I'm so glad, man, that y'all came out, man, to fellowship with me. Ray Gun already coming in here respecting the game. Appreciate that, man. Hold on, let me see. Okay. Give you guys just a little more time. Because you know when I get started, I'm going to get started. You know, I'm going to take off. And I don't got time to hit the like button or, you know. Either you're going to hit it or not. You know, that's on you. Brought to you by the game in Fiji water. That you already know. <laughs> you know. Um, Shalom said, man, there's so many subjects to speak on now. I feel some of the things you guys been sending me. Appreciate that, man, showing all the love. Uh, but right now, man, listen, I have never, if you guys pay attention, whenever anything went down, Sin has never, like, kept going about something. You know, I might touch on it two or at the most three, you know, and I leave a situation alone. <clears throat> you know, most guys, you'll see them, if something real hot, they're just going to stay at it. They just keep staying, picking at it, right? And that's how a lot of channels blew up. Um, but when it came, when it come to Kev, though, man, it's just so much on my mind. And I hope you don't mind me speaking my mind on many things that came to mind concerning Kevin because I can't get it all out within one video. I can't get it all out. It's so many things that I want to speak on that needs to be spoke on. And not just that, you know, you have others that have been saying some things. And um, after I finish, you know, putting some information out there that I wanted to be out there uh, pertaining to Kevin, um, you know, I will be addressing certain ones, not everybody, because some people ain't even, you know, uh, worthy of that. You know, I'm never going to come down from the heavens and be going back and forth with a bride, you know, like a bride. It's just not my thing, you know, you know, but it's just certain, it's certain things really has irritated me. Somebody put uh, a link in my DM earlier and it was the Breakfast Club. And you had DJ Envy just, you know, uh, and, and I understand, listen, if you don't want to hear any profanity or hit go, you might want to leave. But yeah, DJ en Envy just took his panties off. Just all on Breakfast Club today. You know, just took his panties all off and put his coochie all on the airway. Now, I already knew he was a bitch. I already knew he was a bitch ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? But I was just hoping that he was a classy bitch. I knew he was a bitch. But I just thought that maybe this bitch just might have some class about herself seeing that Kev has died. But no, Miss Thing ain't have no motherfucking class at all. That bitch took out her motherfucking coochie. I, and, and usually, Charlemagne be the one. Yeah, Charlemagne would be the one that you would think 
that would just do something goofy, you know, or get real sassy. But no, it wasn't even Charlemagne. It was your boy Envy. He just completely just took all his Victoria's Secret uh, lingerie off on air and just c completely put his coochie on the airwaves about Kevin Sanders. I was like, damn, this bitch ain't got no coof. She don't have no class about herself. None at all. You know, I understand that your father was a police officer and things like that. And of course, you know, by me being the way I am, you know, we all stereotype each other. And of course, I'm stereotyping you, you know, having a father as a police officer. That kind of explains, you know, why you think the way that you think. Um, but I just thought that you would just have enough class about yourself, man. You know, but hey, a bitch ass, a bitch ass nigga, just like we can't get spend too much time being angry at a bitch for being a bitch. Is the same way with bitch ass niggas. Same thing. Same thing. You know, because in my mind, I'm like, damn, why is he doing all of this? The man ain't, the man ain't even been dead a whole week. The 911 emergency call is out there. I just thought that after you would hear that, at least you would try to have some class about yourself. But no, no, no. Miss Envy said, fuck all of that. And she just, she just got in her little ways and things. Like, I'm like, damn, Kevin really had these niggas in their feelings, man. God damn. But uh, hold on, let me do this right quick. Okay, uh, Philly of Society, uh, the KS Memorial playlist is lit. Appreciate that, fam. Tony, good looking, fam. Uh, sir, hold on, I'm trying to look at what you, sir, Bruce, good looking, seeing I can see you concerning, uh, the market, you got the, you got that star quality about yourself, hope the Lord bless you to step into this, uh, vacuum and thrive, people need to, uh, hear you, blessings to the game, man, listen, man, the things y'all been saying, blessings to the game, the people are so hungry, for an individual man to speak and, and replace Kev. And I'm here to tell you, man, nobody is replacing Kev. And I know that sounds harsh. I know some of y'all are heartbreaking, heartbroken, but no. You just have to come to the realization that we just, we, it's just a great loss. And you're gonna have to move on. Stop trying to replace Kev with some, you're just gonna be angry. You're just gonna be upset. They're never going to measure up. You know what I mean? They're never going to measure up. That's like somebody, that's like if Andre Taylor died and somebody like, ooh, who going to play, who going to replace Gorgeous Dre? Uh, nigga, nobody. Certain people are just irreplaceable, man. You, I mean, you just, no. Nobody's going to get in his stead. Nobody is going to um, be able to be in those shoes. Don't, that was a once in a lifetime thing, man whether you know it or not. Now, there become some other people that are dynamic. There will be uh, other individuals that's charismatic and magnetic, a lot of knowledge and wisdom and magnetism that go with them. But at the same particular time, stop trying to uh, make an individual. That's how a lot of players, even in the NBA, you know, um, basically didn't get a chance to fulfill their potential because as a man think it, so is he. Some of you put, uh, they put so much pressure on the boy Hero Minor when they said that he was going to be the next Jordan. You know how many players got hurt by people say, ooh, I think he's going to be the next Jordan. Boy, you didn't, you didn't ended his career before it started. Stop. Let people be the people. People can't even enjoy LeBron because they so busy trying to compare him to Jordan. You just have to realize that that's gone. It hurts, but it's gone, people. Let that go. Stop trying to, who going who to step up to who, uh, in, in Kevin's place next? Uh, nobody. It might be another individual to go over a million subscribers and have some popularity and all of that, but it still won't be Kevin, man. Let that go. That's gone. I know that sounds cutthroat, but it, it's gone, man. Let that go. Now, before I get into what I'm about to get into, 
let me just uh, acknowledge uh, certain things, you know, and I, I just got to throw certain things out there. Um, as you know, during the time when Kev was presiding, uh, you know what I mean, over the whole manosphere, the whole pop, he had popularity in the heavens when everybody had the cheap perfume called Jealousy On concerning Kev. Hey, man, just keeping that thing all the way, you know, 100, man. You guys put every jacket on him that you can put on him. Oh, he ain't this. He ain't that. You made him gay. You know what I mean? Tried to make the guy gay. And I know y'all got in y'all feelings, man. And you were so hurt. You were so hurt. I know some of y'all wanted to cry when you found out that he didn't die with a man in the house. That would have made you guys, it would have made you speak in tongues as Casper the Friendly Ghost gave utterance if Kevin would have died with a man or a transformer. That would have really made you bitch ass niggas so glad. But it didn't happen, bitch. <laughs> it didn't happen, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would have set up there and got you niggas pussy wet. You know what I mean? I know it hurt you, but no, nah, man. He didn't, he didn't die with no man. They wanted that so bad. You know what I mean? That would have made all of these fat, big, burly, uh, Lawrence Taylor built, Reggie White in his third year built ass bitches. You know what I mean? That would have made they pussy just so wet. They would have celebrated, you know, at a buffet. That would have made these, uh, you know, gay ass niggas, you know what I mean, just sit up there, you know, they would have had their pussy wet too. But Kev did not die with a man. And that got y'all feeling some type of way. You searching for flaws, baby. You know, and y'all look, you look, you look terrible too. I just had to let you guys know you look terrible. You've been making up lies on the man and you look terrible. You look absolutely terrible. Terrible. You know what I mean? P, what you mean? Man, listen, uh, they couldn't work the game angle. <laughs> and so they said, you know, he's with a BBW. He was with some fat John Candy, you know what I mean, uh, looking bitch. No, nope. she's not a BBW. That little picture y'all had going around, that ain't even her. And let me just say this. She looked way better. I'm talking about way better. I've looked at, I've went to the pages of many of the handsome bitches that were speaking on Kev and celebrating that Kev is gone. I looked to, I went to most of you bitches pages and most of you bitches look like Patrick Ewan in the face. I'm just keeping that shit all the way 100. Most of you bitches look like Wesley Snipes right now. Not the old Wesley. You look like Wesley Snipes right now. You look terrible. People are like, man, Wesley was looking terrible. He was looking sick at the thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? Y'all looking terrible, man. I went to y'all pages, and you look a fool. That bitch that Kev died with, she look, man, she look better than every hater that I've seen on Facebook and Instagram. I have not yet seen one, you know, bitch that was actually as cute it's the bitch that Kev died with. And I know that make y'all feel some type of way. But it's the truth, though. I have yet to see a bitch that's on that level, you know what I mean, of beauty, that was a hater yet. Oh, don't even bring up the handsome YouTubers. But what about what's the name? Or what about a fool? <laughs> a fool. Don't even, don't even, don't even embarrass yourself. <clears throat> You know what I mean? Matter of fact, I just feel like an asshole. I just feel cutthroat. Sin, what about Cynthia G? What about what about Nala says? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> no. Not, not at all. You know what I mean? Not at all, man. I ain't seen one motherfucking YouTuber that been sitting over there talking about Kev and celebrating that Kev died and shit. I ain't seen none of these bitches, you know what I mean, look as good as the bitch that Kev died with. They talking about he died alone. Well, bitch, if that's the definition of died alone, I'd rather die alone than be with your motherfucking ass. How about that? And let me speak on that. <clears throat> let me put some paint where it ain't and say, you understand me, what most can't pertain to that. Yeah, 
Can I can I can I can I give it to you? Can I can I give you a little spirituality? Then sit up there and walk to carnality and bring it back to everybody's reality. Can I give you that right now? Okay, uh, check this out. Um, you have so many like uh, Moist Walkins that I'll be uh, talking about in the future because he got his motherfucking simp ass. He was just all up there live trying to, I knew that would happen, trying to exalt himself as if he's better than Kevin. Man, if you don't sit your simp ass down, you know what I mean? That bitch embarrassed you, homie. Embarrassed you. She wouldn't give you the time of day when she was in her prime. She waited till she was motherfucking as old as Methuselah and Robert Parrish and Tree Rollins to give you the time of a day. And you sitting over here trying to exalt yourself. Nigga, if you don't sit up there, man, and drink this cup of humility and sit your ass down, the nerve of this nigga. The nerve. But yeah, I seen uh, Dr. Uh, Moise Walkins and, you know, he was speaking on dying alone and all of that. And shout out to Sharon Wimber. She sent, she sent me that. She sent me the goofy ass shit. Shout out to Sharon. You know, I got love for Sharon. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, she sent me that little bullshit. So I seen the shit, you know what I mean? Because I'm in my mind. Ain't nobody agreeing with this shit but some goddamn bitches and niggas that was raised by bitches, you know, uh, by themselves. We know that the woman is the first teacher, but you know what I mean? It's, it's not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, when she's the only teacher, that's why you see the population of niggas that you see today, because that's his only teacher. But we'll get on that at another time. Um, but he spoke on dying alone. Let me, let me say, and he basically spoke on, you know, uh, at this age, you know, you suppose, I even heard DJ Academics, he pretty much saying the same thing. They pretty much echoing each other and shit, right? But let me tell y'all something, man. Many of you, you know, think that marriage, you know, is the best definition of success. You know, of course, you know, everybody got different doctrinal beliefs. And of course, when you think of success, a lot of you have marriage as a part of that uh, definition. But let me tell you something. If God is not the author, if he's not the finisher, if he's not the orchestrator of that marriage, you know what I mean? Accept the Lord, build a house, the labors that labor build in vain. Amen. If God is not the founder, if he's not the one that initiated that, if he's not the one that gave the inspiration for you to walk down the aisles and make vows and make a covenant, you know what I mean? With this woman with is predestined for failure. So all of this, you know, marriage this and marriage that and marriage this. Man, we seeing so many men, you know what I mean, having to pay half and losing their dynasty and losing half of their empire that they uh, uh, had sleepless nights and made innumerable sacrifices to obtain and maintain that type of success only to give half of it to a bitch that never sat up there and, and helped him not one goddamn time to earn that. Man, shut the fuck up. Stop listening to all of these uh, simps and tricks trying to sit up there and push that doctrine on the youth. Knock that off. I've been telling y'all, man, unless God spoke to you and told you to get married, son, don't get married. Unless God told you to get married, woman, don't get married. Because, you know, there's a difference between divinity and permissive. And just because God allowed something to happen, that don't make it divine. It's a lot of people that's married, but that's not who God, that's not his divine will for that person to be with. That's who they chose. And due to the fact that, you know what I mean, they got married, you know, it's better to marry than to burn. Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed is undefiled, you know, as the scripture has said. But at the same particular time, if that's not who God called you to be with, if that's not who he ordained for you to be with, you're still unequally yoked. But but we but he's a Christian too. Listen, a lot of y'all got you need a greater revelation. Touch somebody and say you need a greater revelation. If you don't, if that's not the man that God has ordained for you to be with, if that's not the woman that God has ordained for you to be with, it's still unequally yoked. But we go to the same church, still unequally yoked. But we on the same auxiliary, 
still unequally yoked. If God did not call you to be with that man, if God did not call you to be with that woman, a man is predestined to fall. It's predestined to fall. Now, as far as this dying alone, uh, uh, it's individuals that have made decisions on their own and they married people that they wanted to marry because uh, they allowed the appearance, you know what I mean, of things to be, oh man, he got a nice job, he's handsome, he got a nice car, he got a nice career, he's a, a God-fearing man, you know, this is my husband. Spirit of God didn't tell her that, God didn't tell her that, but you know, like many women, she got into, you know, the appearance of things. And we've seen many, you know what I mean, walk down aisles and make vows with individuals. You know what I mean? God didn't do that, but they did. It. They put their own little marriage together and ended up later getting exactly what they wanted. But once they got involved, they found out that what they wanted wasn't what they needed or really, really even wanted. God damn. Because like I keep telling you, you never really learn who this individual is until you really live with them. You know what I mean? Just because you go to the same congregation, the same church and nothing, things like that, man, that don't mean nothing, man. You know, um, but I said all that to say this. There, do you not know that there are people that are in marriages for 15 and 20 years and they still feel alone? I don't know why they keep push telling y'all this as if, you know, marriage is. The, do you not know that there's people that's been in a marriage for decades and they still feel alone? You got some women right now that feel very alone in that marriage. The only reason why she's staying in that marriage is because she comes from an era that women basically stuck with their husbands. She don't feel loved. She don't feel cared for. She doesn't uh, feel that this is the man God called her to be with. But due to the fact that she made a walk down aisles and made vows with this man, she just staying with him. You know? You know, I know a lot of women like that. So just because, you know, you died in a marriage, you might have died physically in the house with your husband that you've been with for 20 years. And when man looks at with his earthly eye, when he looks at things with his fleshly eye, he say, oh, man, she died with her husband or he died with his wife. But, you know, through the spiritual eyes and through especially through God's eyes, you still died alone. You could be in a marriage and still die alone. You could be living with somebody in the house for 20 years and still die alone. What the hell are you saying? Boyce Walkers, I expect the more wisdom to come out your mouth, man. I expected something powerful, more some, you know, something that was more meaningful than that. I know some people that's been married for quite some time and they still alone. You know? So there, and let me say this, if you're not with the, the uh, man or the woman that God has called you to be with, whether you're in a marriage or not, you know, what I mean, you could be in a marriage for 20 years to somebody that God didn't even ordain for you to be with. And if you died, you still died alone. Some women that still died alone. You could be in a marriage and still dying alone. You know what I mean? So I don't know why they just kept on push, pushing that out there. You know, Kevin, he died alone. Yeah, uh, it's some, yeah, some of y'all in marriages, y'all uh, dying alone. It's the same as a one-night stand. You ain't no different. So while we got people trying to exalt themselves and glorify and magnify themselves to be greater uh, than Kevin or somebody in that type of circumstance, you know what I mean? Uh, you actually think that that marriage, that Boyce Walkins, you think that God put that together? Come on, man. He put that together, man. You know what I mean? This is a this was a weak ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? That set up there. As a matter of fact, when you even watch the video, the way he even asked the bitch to marry him, man, it was sickening, man. You know what I mean? The bitch, she wasn't even, she wasn't even touched. The way he, the way he just the <laughs> the passion in his voice, the, the way he was crying, like, you know, I've always like, come on, guy. And then for your bitch to just be eye-checking Willie D the way that she wanted, right in front of you, all out of bounds, in your face. Come on, man. Nobody should. Listen, man, you need to be talking about business. Talk about economics. Talk about, you know what I mean, uh, uh, how to obtain, 
you know, some legal money and things like that. But as far as talking about women and relationships and all that, man, that's not your lane, man. That's not your lane. That's not your lane. You ain't nothing but a trick. And the reason why that bitch sat up there and gave you a time of day, she was like, oh, I'm not in my heyday no more. I'm not in my prime. If I was in my prime, shit, I could have had 20 motherfucking uh, Boyce Walkins. But due to the fact I done got older, I done like pretty much hit the wall. And this dumb motherfucker, he's stupid enough to still marry me. And he rich. Nah, I might as well go on here. Yeah, I might as well go on here. The nerve of this guy to actually exalt himself over Kevin. Let me, let, matter of fact, I'm, listen, I'm putting the pimping, just speaking as a man. Okay, which one do I want to do? Do I want to be a rich man marrying some old ass bitch with these saggy ass titties? Um, she didn't give me the time of day when we were younger. She played me to the left, but now that I got popularity, now I got some clout to my name, um, now basically that I'm rich, you know, now she's going to, uh, now she's willing to sit up there, you know, and actually marry me. <sighs> or do I want to be, uh, like Kev, you know what I'm saying? Uh, well known, popping. Lit, rich, driving around in a Ferrari. And, you know, I just so happened to just be walking around and I ended up meeting this old big booty ass bitch. You know what I'm saying? That was checking me out. Like, oh, my God, you're Kevin Samuels. Yeah, bitch, that's who I am. What's happening? And, uh, you know, we just so happened to go to my place and, you know, uh, you know, grab a little Red Bull. You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, you know, man, having a great time behind that ass you know, smacking that ass, you know what I mean, doing my thing, you know, and uh, just so happened, you know, my heart or what have I mean, go, like, if, if, like, pretty much like I've been telling y'all, the way to go out is to actually be a man of God. That's really the only way that you should want to go out. When I go out, I don't want to, you know, have some pimps, I want to die pimping. Some niggas, I want to die in some pussy. No, I don't. I want to die doing the will of God if I have my choice. That's just me, though. But... If I had to pick between them two, die with some old bitch that only got married to me because she didn't got older and now she giving me the time of day because I'm rich uh, now and she's older or basically uh, be an old nigga that's still fucking the shit out of uh, young bitches and shit. Yeah, man, uh, give me the uh, old nigga that's still popping, that's lit, driving around in the Ferrari and I just uh, stood up there and met a Boston baked bean head ass bitch you know, downstairs I brought back uh, to my place and I'm uh, I'm tapping that ass. Yeah, give me that for 500, Alex. Yeah, give me that. Yeah, give me that, man. I would take Kev's life over uh, Boyce, Boyce Walkers. Well, he's married and he's got someone. Man, that ain't no love. You know what I mean? He's a goofy. Give, come on, man. Get them likes all the way up, man. And share this video. I'm not, I ain't even got started yet. I just wanted to acknowledge some shit. He's a goofy. He ain't had no business speaking on Kev. The nerve. Um, but yeah, that's my thing about uh, with the die alone. Spiritually, again, if you are not with the man or the woman that God has ordained for you to be with, um, this is not divinity. It's per, it's permissive. And uh, in God's eye, it, it would still be you know, you uh, dying alone because you're not fulfilling his will. You know, you're in the institution of marriage, so you're not fornicating anymore. But this is still predestined for failure because God is not the founder of this relationship. And anything that God is not the orchestrator of, it definitely has an expiration date on it. So, you know, I don't know why people want to just promote this. You know, I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. And, and these people be having the most problem. Like I told you, just like Nas said, there's nothing worse than being alone than wishing you were. And we have people that's in relationships, situationships, battleships that appear to be relationships on social media. You know what I mean? They, I'm talking about, man, they smiling. They got the, they got, man, when you look at their pictures and videos, you hear music so child, so beautiful in your head. I mean, man, these, these pictures and videos are great. 
But they man, they got so many discrepancies and misunderstandings behind closed doors, man. It 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 it'll, it'll really throw you for a loop. Don't allow the appearance to be the interference. So again, spiritually, for the spiritual man, for the spiritual woman, wait on God. Don't allow society or a variety of people in your congregation to compel you to do something that's totally contrary uh, to God's will for your life. You need to wait on the spirit of God to speak to you concerning who your wife is or who your husband is. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added. Amen. So, you know, for the spiritual man, you know, man, you, you, you wait on to God give you, you know, your wife. You wait on God to give you your husband. Don't you put things together. No, because if you put things, something together, you're going to end up messing things up. You know, father knows best. So let him do that. Now, for the carnal man, like I said, you know, getting away from spirituality and get, getting to carnality. Uh, of course, the way that I would love to go out is in the will of God. But if I had to pick, if you just make me pick between Kevin and Boyce, dying with a bitch who really don't love me, that's just with me because of my situation versus me just being an older nigga, moving around, still uh, having fun, still sitting over there, residing in the bad and in some young pussy, you know what I mean? Cross country. Hey man, uh, yeah, that ain't even, <laughs> that ain't even nothing uh, for a discussion. Yeah, give me that uh, Kevin Samuels over that boy's walking uh, life any day. Yeah. And, and let me say this, all these things, looks like he died alone. No, bitch, he, he, he didn't die alone. And he wasn't a hypocrite uh, to his message either because Kevin always made it known that he was a trick. Oh, let me speak on that too. This is some things that you guys can learn from uh, Kevin. You know, being comfortable with who you are. Not trying to be no player. Not trying to... Uh, uh, I'm in the street sense too. I'm not the uh, image, the definition you got. You know, I, I told you guys, I taught y'all the true definition of a player. Some of y'all think a player is somebody who's just promiscuous. No, that's a gigolo. You know what I mean? I told you what a real player is. I gave you the street, the game definition versus what squares thing. A player and a gigolo is two different things. But look, check it out. Kev was himself. Kev let it be known that he was a trick. <clears throat> so how was he in hypocrisy if he let it be known that he was a trick? Some of you are clients, but you try to present yourself like you're a pimp giant, like you're a Mac giant. You know what I'm saying? When you're a trick and you're governed by the spirit of tricking, you have to be who you are. Don't waste time trying to be somebody else. Kev was not on social media talking about he's a pimp. He wasn't on social media talking about he's a Mac. Kev kept it real with you and let it be known that uh, like he was getting his soldier slim on. I'll pay for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to dominate financially. I'm not going to just dominate in the bedroom. Uh, when the check comes, I'm dominating. I'm paying the, for the utilities. I'm taking care of all the necessities. I don't need your currency. I, I'm fulfilling all the financial prerequisites as a man. He let that be known. So when somebody say, yeah, he died a trick. Yeah, he died who he presented himself to be. He told you what he was. Where's the hypocrisy? Excuse me, where's the hypocrisy in that? That's like you telling me, that's like if, if somebody like, man, we felt God forbid, but that's like somebody telling me, man, they said O'Shea died in the room, you know what I mean, with a hoe. He, uh, O'Shea was in there smiling while tricking off, and he died. Where's the hypocrisy? O'Shea has been telling you that he is a trick from Genesis to Revelations. Where's the revelation about that situation? The man, the man told you he was a trick. The man was going to different countries and tricking. What are you talking about? That's not, that's not hypocrisy. So, you know, again, you know, um, the reason why. Oh, and I just want to give you this. I just want to lay some things down because I'm going to speak on that. 
Kevin was not an enemy to his message. Can I just put that out there? He wasn't an enemy to the message. That's why he was able to prosper with the message. Somebody might say he wasn't the founder of certain messages. And I can agree with that. But guess what? He was able to be prosperous with the message because he wasn't an enemy to the message. Somebody might say, Tommy said that and Tommy said this, but Tommy couldn't prosper with the message the way that Kevin could prosper with the message because Tommy is an enemy to his message. When you are an enemy to your message, you can't prosper with your message in totality. You will never be able to get the fullness, you know what I mean, of the blessings that, you know, uh, you're supposed to reap off of your message simply because you're an enemy of your message. If I get on here every day and I'm talking about ratchet black women, I'm talking about ghetto ass bitches. I'm talking about, oh, my God, look at this ghetto bitch. Look at this and this and this. But every time you see me, these are the bitches that I'm tricking off with. These are the bitches that I'm having sex with. These are the bitches that I'm having children with. Then that means that I'm an enabler of the problem. I'm supporting the problem by tricking on it. I'm supporting the problem by fornicating with it. I'm, I'm supporting that. I'm an enabler of it. I'm helping the problem exacerbate. Do you not understand that? You're an enemy to the message. And so that's why Kevin was able to prosper with the message simply because he was not an enemy of the message. Some of you have certain messages, but you can't prosper with it. There are certain YouTubers right now, they got some cold messages, but they're not the message that they bring. Their lifestyle does not co-sign the things that proceed out of their mouth. Their lifestyle is totally contrary to the things that's being conveyed out of their mouth. Therefore, they are an enemy of the message. Certain people won't even take the time to even listen to what the hell do they, that they're saying. And they got a life changing message. But due to the fact that the people are looking at the messenger, they're like, ah, you know, but Kevin was able to prosper with the message. Why? Because he wasn't an enemy to it. Let that minister to your spirit. Because some of you got some good game. You got some good information. But at the same time, it won't be acceptable because the lifestyle that you live is abominable. So you can have a message that's impeccable, but because your lifestyle is abominable, it's not going to be acceptable to the people. They're not going to receive it. You got to strive to be the message that you bring. Oh, man, I'm talking. Can I, can I, just, can I just preach a little bit? You got to be the message that you bring. Your life, you know what I mean, got to be on one accord with the message that's being conveyed. Imagine Kevin Samuels talking about discipline and he's over 300 pounds. Imagine Kevin Samuels saying the things that he said to a lot of those females that profess to be women. And he was overweight and out of shape. Imagine if he couldn't dress. Oh, I'm getting somewhere. Imagine, you know what I mean? If he didn't, if he had uh, titties, you know what I mean? That was uh, bigger than, uh, I forgot how to say that girl's now. I think it's Persephone on Instagram. She be with Big Jaw all, all, all the time. Y'all know who I'm talking about. She be with uh, Mink and, and Big Jaw all the time. That girl got some knockers. Her titties stay game banging. You know, imagine if Kevin Samuels had those. He would have never reached <laughs> the level of success that he reached. Why? Because if he had that going on, he would have been an enemy to the message. He's talking about discipline. How are you going to talk about discipline and your appearance is not right? So, you know, it's like I said, it's a lot to learn. But before I go there, because we're coming back to that, we're definitely going to speak on uh appearance and, and everything like that. But let me let me just uh, 
stay on uh, some things that I just wanted to acknowledge before I get all into my message and speak on so many things that you guys could have learned. But no, Kevin was not gay. And you, you already know those that watch. You know, I ain't going to lie. I made a few uh, jokes. And Kev, Kev knew that. We talked about that. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't tripping on that. You know what I mean? Because I even talked to O'Shea. O'Shea will tell you. I had called O'Shea. I said, hey, man, what's up with these pictures? Because it was this one picture where Kev had on this jacket and, he, and, he, and these glasses. And they look like my grandmother's glasses. I'm like, well, what the fuck is Kev on? I hit you. I'm like, man, what, what is Kev on? And then I seen the uh, the picture, and then uh, uh, talking about being a boy cheerleader and stuff like that. Man, I had to sit up there and uh, call. I had to call Shay. I said, Shay, what is this? You know what I mean? I was like, Shay, uh, Shay was like, cut it out, sin. Cut it out. That was like, you can't tell me that when you seen these pictures, the first thing that didn't come to your mind Especially when you heard about the boy chili there and then you seen them glasses. You cannot tell me the first thing that didn't sit up there, you understand me? Uh, 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 first thing that came to your mind was that song. Dun, 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 ow. Dun, 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 ow. Dun, come on, man. I was like, man, Kev wrong for this. But you know what? One thing I love about uh, Kev, he didn't get in his feelings. He took it. And you know what I mean, roll with it. He because Kev's thing was in that era during that time, you know what I mean, uh in the eighties, you know what I mean? And if you look in the eighties, a lot of times, you know, a lot of them guys was dressing feminine. Look, can we just keep that real? A lot of guys were trying to dress like Prince and Michael Jackson and a lot of them guys were trying to look soft, man. Go look at some old pictures of Babyface. Oh my God, go look at that one album cover of the Isley Brothers where everybody got their shirt tied up above their belly button. Come on, man. Them old niggas was wrong for that. <laughs> so, of course, when I seen that picture, I was like, oh, no. Ow. Ow. I'm like, oh, no, Kim. No, man. Oh, no. Take them glasses off. Take them glasses off, fam. But that was that era. But, you know, one thing, like I said, one thing I like, he didn't get into his feelings about the situation. And, um, you know what I mean? Uh, like I've been telling people, if Kev was gay, somebody would have exposed him. You cannot get over a million su subscribers. Fuck, you can't even get to 500,000 subscribers without somebody from your past letting that be known. No. If Kevin was gay, one of his uh, lovers, somebody that he was dealing with, would have came out and be like, mm, to have value man, huh? <laughs> somebody would have came out so you can't give me that. You cannot have that type of clout in the day of clout. This era that we're in, this is the day of clout where popularity means more than currency. It means more than property. It means more than pussy. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers is dying for clout. It's stronger than heroin. It's stronger than crystal meth. So you cannot deceive me into thinking that Kev was gay in this era and nobody can came out and try to expose that man. Man, stop it. Get that shit up, man. Impossible. Impossible. You know what I mean? Man, shut up. All, all the money in the world. No. People miss me with that. He might have been paying somebody. Miss me with that. You got individuals that's pushing money to the side just for fame. And these homos is just like these motherfucking, you understand me, thoughts. P, what you mean by that? These bitches not even, how many times have you seen bitches fuck up their bag just to sit up there, you understand me, and get some attention? Man, knock that shit off, man. You got individuals exposing celebrities 
missing out on big opportunities to get some more currency just to sit up there and have two seconds of attention. Man, knock that shit off, man. Y'all could have came better than that. Maybe he paying them. Man, stop it. The thirst, the hunger for attention would have been so overwhelming that somebody would have came out. Somebody would have came out. That man wasn't gay. The only evidence that you have of Kevin is supporting him being a heterosexual man. And when he died, bitch, he died, you understand me, with a bitch that's finer than you. Keep that 100. So, yeah, man, you know what I mean? Uh, Kev, you know what I mean, died doing what he wanted to do. Yeah, he died doing what he wanted to do. He didn't die doing what society wanted him to do. He died doing what he wanted to do. You know, all of this, oh, my God. Oh, it was just so sad. <laughs> you sitting over there with your, a, a, a dusty man that you married to, because I just know how these bitches think. They think just because, you know, you married, you know what I mean? This, that's cool. So what if we don't got a pot to piss in or window to throw it out of? So what if we hate each other? So what if we disrespect one another? So what if we uh, fighting every goddamn day? We married. You know, j motherfuckers is married just to be able to say they married. Man, fuck that. I'd rather be by myself. If I wasn't in this game and if I was a square, I'd rather be by myself, man. Especially as a successful black man. Marriage? Fuck no. I would be by myself. So while you got all of these guys talking about, you know, uh, DJ Academics, who you really shouldn't be listening to about no damn women, um, you know, he was living like he was still in his 20s. That's a 20s mindset. When you're in your 50s, woo, -woo, -woo goofy. He just came into the money. He just came into the success when? Not in his 20s, not in his 30s, not in his 40s, in his 50s, Goofy. You think Kevin thought he was going to die? No. Don't you think that Kevin thought the way that y'all think? That he had all day? That he had some time? Exactly. You don't think that Kevin uh, thought that, man, I got, I got years to do this. I got years to do that. Just like we all think. You know what I mean? He didn't been through the boyfriend, girlfriend thing. He didn't been married. He got a daughter. Come on, man. Y'all be overhyping that shit. That shit overrated. Marriage this and marriage that. Hey, man, get, get them likes out there, man. I want them to hear this shit. Yeah, it's some things, man, I'm going uh, to end up saying, you know what I mean, on the night. You know what I mean? Some of y'all wanted me to speak on. Before I get deep in my message, I'm about to get to that. But y'all overhyping that. Y'all really overhyping that marriage shit, man. Y'all ought to feel ashamed of yourself. That marriage shit, man, is overrated. You know what I mean? Especially if God didn't ordain it. Man, knock that off. Like, it's just a thing to be, you know what I mean, to be married. Man, stop it. If you don't uh, hurry up, you know what I mean, and uh, get yourself together. Hold on, let me put that. Died alone. Some of y'all going to be married and still die alone. Some of y'all going to be with your husband, you know what I mean, and be with him for a decade or some decades and still die alone with your husband in the house and you still died alone. He didn't love you. You didn't love him. Y'all just stayed together just to say that you was married. You know what I mean? Just to keep up an image, just to keep up a front on, on at church, just to keep up a front in the community, just to keep up a front on Instagram. Man, knock it off, man. I know too many of them type of people. That shit overrated. I'd rather be by myself, especially if I'm a successful black man. You want, I just came into the money. And what do you want me to do? You want me to just hurry up and just marry somebody? Motherfuckers ain't even thinking about the shit they saying. Motherfuckers is actually sharing that shit and saying that shit like it was profound. That's not profound. That ain't meaningful. And like I said, that ain't no shot, you know what I mean? Because Sharon, that's my girl. But, you know, like I said, only ones that would be impressed with some shit like that is some bitches, some women. Only women would be impressed with something like that. Ooh, that makes sense. No, the fuck it don't. If I just got rich in my 50s, 
Bitch, I'm not trying to rush into no goddamn marriage and give you half. Fuck out of here with this shit. I'm trying to get my motherfucking old ass dick up. My dick's still getting up, bitch. I'm trying to get these old ass balls licked on. I'm trying to sit up there and enjoy my flesh with young flesh. I don't want your old ass, bitch. If you'll move your motherfucking tails from the crib, Methuselah, uh, old Bill Cartwright ass out my goddamn way while I get to this young bitch. Shit. Want to be up and want me to be married to your old ass. Want me to sit up there and, and look at your tired ass face. You know what I mean? When I uh get up and shit, smelling your breath. You know what I mean? Talking about we still together. <laughs> no. Fuck out of here. I just became successful in my 50s and I got to hurry up and get married. You know what I mean? So I won't die alone. <laughs> Boy, y'all thinking it's fucked up. God ain't told that man to get married. So why would he hurry up and get married? Why would he, what, he, he didn't put the marriages that he was in before. That was something that he put together. And you see how that worked out. You know what I mean? Maybe uh, Kel finally learned how to listen to the voice of God. The scriptures say, my, my, my sheep know my voice. Amen. Maybe he finally learned the voice of God. It was like, man, God ain't told me to do that, so I ain't going to do it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Motherfuckers want you to sit up there and marry their old ass. Bitch, I, I just got rich. I just, man, I'm lit. I got over a million followers on Instagram, a million subscribers on YouTube, everybody on my dick. Like, bitch, when I go live, I got more people looking at me than the rappers do. Bitch, I'm not thinking about no goddamn marriage. Fuck out of here. I got all these Instagram models and shit. I can I need consultation. I need it bad. I need you to help me with my image. You know what I mean? And you want me to go sit up there and go marry some old hag. Just <laughs> the way y'all thinking is all wrong. The only thing sad about dying is dying out the will of God. That's it. That's it. The only thing that I'm afraid of, the only thing I'm fearful of is dying outside of the will of God. Dying as a backslider. That's it. All that other shit y'all talking about, dying, married or married or not, none of that matters. There's a lot of married folk that's going to be going to hell. I don't even care about that. If, and and, and after, when I make my, uh, you know what I mean, if I'm getting a, a, a position to get in transition and come over there on the other side, yeah, if God don't give me another wife, if he want me to be like the Apostle Paul, it is what it is. Yeah. I'm not, I didn't come to God to get no damn wife and shit. That's why I'm tearing it up now. That's why I'm having so much pussy and us getting my dick sucked the way I'm getting it sucked now. That's why I'm, my dick is international now. I'm getting my dick sucked in Canada now. I used to get my dick sucked and fuck up in, in, in America. I used to be sitting over there tearing up some pussy in America. Now I'm doing that shit in Canada. My dick international now. I ain't thinking about no damn marriage. Bitch, I got international balls. I done sit up there and got my dick sucked in different, in different languages, different vernaculars. <laughs> Thinking about no damn marriage. Man, got all these old soft ass niggas saying, pandering to these goofy bitches and shit. Just saying, just, in, oh my God, he's right. Yes, that is the truth. He died alone. He needed to be with somebody that cared for him. That She didn't even know, she didn't even know the room number. Bitch, she knew how to pull his pants down. She knew how to put his dick in, his, uh, in her mouth. She knew how to take this dick. You know what I mean? She didn't even know the room number. That's good. And let me speak on that. All you stupid motherfuckers talking about some, he was in an apartment and it wasn't even in his name. Let me, matter of fact, let me use this situation for my situation. Don't you know if I die right now, they're going to tell you that sin died, you know what I mean, in a motherfucking, he wasn't even in a house. Yeah, he wasn't even in the house, girl. And the place wasn't even in his name. Yeah, bitch, I live in a motherfucking condo that's overpriced. Overpriced like a motherfucker. I'm paying $4,000 a month to stay in this bitch. And it, I mean, in comparison to where I'll be staying in the States, shit, I would be motherfucking living way better in the States than where, I mean, this little three-bedroom condo. But at the same time, 
I am in the square one area of Mississauga. I am looking over City Hall. So I'm mainly paying for, you know what I mean, the views and, and, and the, the view that I got. Really? Which ain't shit. I mean, that's cute to y'all. This is cute, but $4,000 a month, shit, goddamn. So no, I don't have the place in my name, bitch. And you know the type of lifestyle that I live. No. And if I had the clout that Kevin had, why the fuck would I have my place in my name? You motherfuckers are stupid. Just dumb. Why the hell? If I got Kevin Samuels clout, why in the hell would I have the place in my name? You stupid motherfuckers. Why? Why would I have the place in my name, bitch? Why? When you got people, and some of y'all know who I'm talking about. I ain't even going to mention dude. When you got goofies like that, that all they want to do is sit up there and, and, and try to, you know, look me up or try to do some goofy shit. Why? Because of my situation now. That's why you don't even see my face on here, man. Some of you, you know, you didn't FaceTime me, so you, you see the difference, you know? Motherfuckers got some certain people thinking they're seeing and got sick, that I'm out here 70 pounds. Somebody told somebody I'm on drugs. All type of st stupid, hey, but whatever they tell you, hey, yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's how, I, that's how I do it. You know, whatever they told you, yeah, it's true. But yes, bitch, my place ain't in my motherfucking name. Yeah, what that mean? Hello, I'm waiting on the, I'm, I'm looking at y'all comments. What does that mean? My place ain't in my name. And I don't have half of the clout that Kevin had. Why in the fuck would I have my place in my motherfucking name with that type of clout? You got to be a dumbass. People trying to kill you. People trying to, it might be a fat, it might be a fat bitch that might want to roll up and just shoot at me. Just because of what I said on Instagram. If you Kevin, you might have sat up there and, and, and told her, called her Big Shirley, and now she mad as hell coming from checkers, coming from rallies, and she want to sit up there and, and, and just shoot at a nigga. She coming straight from KFC. She coming straight from Popeye's, and now she aiming at a nigga. Why would I have my place in my name, you stupid fucks? Dumb motherfuckers, I don't even have my motherfucking place in my name, bitch. But anyway, look, uh, another thing about Kev being broke, you got to be the dumbest motherfucker. You know what I mean? To actually think that Kevin Samuels was broke. And, and just to keep it real, some of y'all not dumb. It's just that you want to believe that narrative so bad because of your hatred for Kevin. You want to believe that Kevin Samuels was broke so bad, you know what I mean, because of your hatred for Kevin, because your dislike for Kevin, because of what he said. You know what I mean? Come on, man. We've Let's just be honest. We have never seen that done before. And it will be a while before we see it again. I just got to hit you with the truth. We have never seen that done before. And it'll be a while before we see it again. 500, 500, 500, 500, 200, 300, 300, 500, 500, 200, 300, 500. Only thing that was going in my head when Kevin used to be live, you know, I could hear 50 cent in my head. You know what I mean? More money, more money. <laughs> going straight to the bank with this, you know? Come on, man, 500, 500, 500, Some, another member. Somebody else became another member, another member, another member. Somebody became another member, 500, 500. I forgot this one dude's name. Dude used to give $500 every show. Every show this nigga went live, dude was tearing that shit up. I'm like, man, that nigga having money. He throwing $500 around like it's just a motherfucking dollar. He's showing out. In front of these hoes. He letting it be known he got some money. Every Kevin Samuels live, dude was just showing up 500, 500, 500, 500. I don't even know the nigga name. That's his name. Five, Mr. 500, 
500, 500. Oh, his name Ike? Okay. 500, Mr. 500, man. And you mean to tell me that Kev died broke? You stupid motherfuckers like I told y'all. And I know that Shay probably didn't want me to put that out there. But one month, this was just one month, Kev was on the booty of 700000 I'm not even going to give you the exact number. I'm just telling you, it was right on the ass. Grabbing the ass. T had the, had the, right on it. Right on the booty of 700000 uh, 700, in one month. And you want me to believe that this man was broke. Man, knock it off. Knock it off, bro. Knock it off. You, you, you sound stupid. You sound dumb as hell. When he was at the height, the height, I'm talking about every night was 20 to 25,000 people every night. Nigga, that's the type of money he was making. Yeah. You know, some pimps in the game, man, we get happy, man, when we have a, a $100,000, uh, you know, month or something more than that. You know what I mean? But I'm, I could just be 100 with you. I've never even made half of what that man made that particular month in one month before. I'm not, not scratch 700. Motherfucker, let's reduce the motherfucker down to 350, bitch. I've never checked that in one month. Never. You know, I know you're going to have some people, they're going to lie on their pimping. But sin don't do that. No new reason for me to lie on that. I've never done that. But he did. And he did it legally. Did you hear what I said, young people? Kev was doing king, drug kingpin numbers legally with his mind. He wasn't selling no drugs. He wasn't pimping no hoes. This was a man that was just speaking his opinion. And he was making drug kingpin dollars Legally on YouTube. Young man, you can do the same thing. You don't got to sell no drugs. You ain't got to get involved in no criminality. You ain't got to put yourself in a position where you can lose your liberty in society. No, young man. You can make countless sacrifices the same way Kevin did. And you can make legal money. And you don't have to be in nobody's jail. You don't got to be in nobody's prison. You ain't got to do none of that. Did you hear me? Fuck going to jail. Fuck going to prison. Put all that real nigga, uh, whatever you perceive a real nigga to be. Put that bullshit up and be a real man. Be a man. Be a provider. You know what I mean? Bless your family. You know, want to do something gangster? Want to do something real? Get your family out of poverty. You know what I mean? Be a blessing to your community. Do that. <clears throat> That's gangster. That's hood. That's 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 a blessing. But, you know, like I said, man, um, it's a lot to be learned uh, from Kev. Before I get deep in my message, I just wanted to address some things. That's all. You know what I mean? Got to be original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. But they wanted us to actually believe that Kev was broke. Y'all could have came better than that. I'm ashamed of you that you actually couldn't think of. uh Something, you know, better than that. You know, you you could have thought of something better than that. Um, hold on. There we go. Want to see y'all comments. I couldn't see it. But, yeah, the gay, the gay shit, hang it up. Being broke, hang it up. You know what I mean? The dying alone, hang that up. You know, she didn't even know the, 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 the room number. I mean, he had, just, he had just met the bitch. See, that wouldn't happen, you know, if he was met. What are you talking about? You know, he would have probably died of a heart attack even sooner with a wife. <laughs> Let me stop. He could have been married. He could have been married to a woman that's saying and doing things, you understand me, that's motherfucking putting his blood pressure in heaven. What are you talking about? Why they tried to make it like if he was in mar if he was married, he would still be here. The fuck out of here with that shit, man. And then I just said, 
Nobody's doing common sense. The man just got rich in his 50s. And just to be real, Kev really, in my opinion, didn't even get a chance to really enjoy his money. He did a few things. He bought watches and, you know, he did some things like that. But to be real, he really didn't get a chance to really enjoy his money like that. You know, he didn't. Kev, you know what I mean, bought some nice clothes and watches and, you know what I mean, and, and, and went some places, had some good times and things like that. But uh, to actually enjoy his money, he didn't. He didn't. Kev was studying. Kev was reading. Kev was working. Kev was too busy going live. Kev was too busy flying to another place for the next interview. That was his life. His availability, you know what I mean, his whole itinerary, uh, his whole time, all his time, it went to his work. He wasn't playing. You know what I'm saying? He didn't get a chance to enjoy, you know what I mean, his money. Not at all. In my opinion, no, he had a few good times, but no, no. But I want to ask you guys this before I get deep into, I'm getting ready to start with my message. I just want to acknowledge those things. But I want to ask you, is the clout worth it? I mean, this is somebody who was completely clouded up. You know, Kevin Samuels would be that that guy. You know, you don't get to go live on Instagram, you know, with Nicki Minaj. And then Nicki, the first thing she said, I wanted to talk to you. Yeah. You know, everybody knows who this man is. You did. So my thing is uh, to you, you know what I mean? Do you really want to be clouded up? Do you really want that popularity? Some of y'all got my DM saying you can take it. I don't want I don't even want it. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't even want it, man. And it's not because of me. It's because of my family. I know they can't take that type of shit. If I was to die and to just have all of these haters just painting all of these narratives that's not me, you know what I mean? My family they can't take that shit. The, my family, man, uh, spent on my mother's side, squares. Squares. They cannot take that. You know what I mean? Putting out uh, the, the uh, uh, 911 call. I'm, in, I'm dying in the background and all that. Man, they could, man... Man, certain cousins, they couldn't even take it. As far as the hatred, as far as with me, that don't even bother me. In this pimp game, man, I done went through hell and back. So that shit, that, that little shit with them squares and shit, that ain't nothing, man. You know, that ain't even, that ain't even nothing. You know what I mean? After you done been through so much... uh bullshit and betrayal like that ain't that ain't nothing but you know my family couldn't take that but i just want to ask you you know do you really want that some of y'all you know man you desire that type of position that type of popularity and my question to you appreciate that baby my question to you is do you even really want that man do you want that you got people lying on this man every day. You got channels that's dedicated, you know what I mean, to sitting over there, uh, you know, speaking on that man's, you know, about him being gay, about him being broke, putting out all these false narratives every day about this man. Do you really want that? You die and then your daughter is still here and she got to hear all of this bullshit. That's why Kev was wise. He never revealed who his daughter was and none of that. None of that. Y'all don't know who his daughter is. And that was wise. Very wise. You know, very wise, man, to not let it be known who his child is. Because y'all would have stopped. Yeah, I already seen the way y'all did Toby's brother. Toby's brother ain't have nothing to do with what Toby said. But y'all was in uh. Toby's brother's comment section just saying all type of wicked, heartless, demonic type of shit in the comment section of his own brother. 
So I can just imagine the comments that would uh, come forth out y'all mouth in his daughter's comment section. You know? But yeah, man, time to get into it. You know what I mean? I just wanted to acknowledge, you know, that. And of course, uh, I'm not really even through. Uh, oh, let me, before I get into that, let me just acknowledge this. You know, because some of y'all had got in. I wanted to hear your take between Andre Taylor and Kevin Samuels. Okay, so I'll answer that before I get started. Um, as you know, Andre Taylor is pretty much my big brother from another mother, man. This is somebody that I sincerely, earnestly loves. You know, this is somebody that I love the same way that Minister Farrakhan at one time actually loved uh, Brother Malcolm. You know what I mean? The same way that Brother Malcolm, you know what I mean, loved the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You know, that's the type of love that I have for Andre Taylor. You know? So um, you would never hear me, even when I disagree with my brother, you would never hear me publicly, you know, uh, going against my brother. No. You know, so I had I had to stay out of that because I fuck with Kev, but Dre was my Dre is my brother. I fuck with Kev. That's the homie, you know, cool, cool, cool. But Dre is my brother. So I couldn't go against uh, Dre. So that's why you never see me uh, publicly going live, speaking on. You notice I never did a video concerning that situation because I just had to stay out of that. And you guys should learn from that. You should learn how I conducted myself in that situation. I didn't put on my choosing shoes and choose either side as a man. I had my opinion. I kept it to myself during that time. That's what I did. And you should do the same thing. If you have, if you know two uh, parties, if you know two individuals, you know what I mean? That whatever is, is, is in the Bay, in the Bay Area, they say, you know, uh, it's some funk. If they funking with each other, if it's some discrepancy going on, um, yes, you stay out of that. You stay out of that. It's not for you to be a bitch and put on some choosing shoes and choose a side. You just be a man and you just keep presiding over your business and hopefully things are falling into play. Now, what I will say is if you have a brother or a friend <coughs> that you fuck with, you pull your brother to the side and you have a private conversation about what you agree or disagree with, but to go public with a, a, a disagreement on something that's being said or done, that's contrary to wisdom. Because now you didn't did the Johnny Cash move, and now you didn't allow the people to know that there's some discord going on, and the people didn't even have to know that. That wasn't the people's business. You know? So many of you can learn from the way that I conducted myself in that situation by just speaking, you know, in the vernacular of silence, just leaving that alone. Don't do no videos on it. Just go on about your business. You know, that's how you handle that when you have, when you know two people that are at odds or, or whatever. It's not for you to put on your choosing shoes. You know, you say, don't choose a side, just be on your per Man, just stay being a man. Don't choose nobody. Let the bitch choose. That's y'all problem now. These bitches can't even be bitches no more because y'all taking the bitch role. Let the woman choose. Why are you in the back of the line endeavoring to choose? Leave that alone. So, no, I didn't put on my choosing shoes. I don't have choosing shoes. You know, I let the women be the women. It's not for me to, whose side you on? You on Kevin's side or you on Dre's side? I'm not on either side. I'm on the truth side. I'm on the game side. I'm on my side. I'm on the man's side. You know, it's not for me to choose. And, no, 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 no. Um, those are two people that, you know, I admire. You know, so uh, it wasn't for me to do that. And like I said, let that be an example how you should carry yourself if you was to ever be put in a situation like that. 
because I had O'Shea, Minister Jab. It was so many. Man, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on with Dre? What's going on with you? Why, why Dre? You know? And hey, that don't have nothing. That's not, that's not my concern. You let that, you just leave that alone. And you just, you know, uh, let the weak and the tear grow together and let the game separate. That's how you do that. Okay, moving on. Let's get into some things that you can learn from Kevin. Before I get into this, I just want you to say that I, I just want to say that I'm deeply saddened, you know, uh, by this. It took me uh, a while for it to even, you know, uh, register. I even take you back to the, the moment, you know, uh, I had seen certain things, you know what I mean, pop up. Oh, yeah. Then I seen my DM was just lit up. So, you know what I mean? I instantly, I called Kev. I had called his phone two times, no answer. So after calling his phone uh, two times, I called O'Shea. Shea didn't answer. But then Shea ended up, because of the area that he was in, it didn't even ring. Shea ended up hitting me on Facebook. And he was like, I'm trying to find out now. <clears throat> so Shea was trying to find out. Shea was, you know, searching and things like that. Next thing I know, I get a message saying, it's true. You know what I mean? He said, it's true. I was like, how you know? He was like, bro, I just heard they said that uh, the police, you know what I mean, woo, woo, woo. And then, you know, people was watching the, uh, the Melanie King uh, girl when she was live. You know what I mean? So people basically start saying it's true. Fuck me all the way up. I'm not even going to lie to you. And one of the main reasons why it fucked me up, because I said to myself, he was just live. He was just live. And for those of you like, you knew Kev? Like, come on, man. Uh, way before Kev had blew up. As a matter of fact, I wish I had that video. Kev did a video that I wish I could have. Of course, I got the one video that Kev was answering calls for us. It was uh, me and Freeze, and we were speaking on uh, R. Kelly on O'Shea's platform. And uh, Kev came up, and he was uh, taking the phone calls for me and Freeze. I started to even post that video uh, on here. You know what I mean? But it's really mainly me and Freeze talking. But Kev does talk here and there, but he's just really just taking the call. Um, but it was another video prior to that that I, I wish, um, uh, whoever, if they ever get a hold of Kevin's, uh, account, uh, it's probably still on there. I don't think he deleted it, but you know, Kev used to, uh, he did this one video where he spoke on me, alpha male strategies, O'Shea, and a few more people that I just can't remember. But what Kev was saying was, this cologne goes with this person. You know what I'm saying? He was actually like defining our character. He was uh, talking about, you know, the reason why this cologne would go perfectly with AMS because he's this type of man. And, you know, this is would be good for his image. And woo, woo, woo. Kev, I'm talking about man. Before he even blew up, I always liked his channel, but this was a video Kev had did. He was like, you know, alpha male strategies. This would be the cologne for him, and this would be the cologne for sinful. Sinful is this type of man, and woo, 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 woo. Man, if I had only known, boy, I would have sat up there and, and, and took that video. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I can't find it nowhere, you know? Um, <coughs> but... You know, um, fast forwarding, you know, when he blew up, he blew up. Let me just take you down through memory lane before I get to my message. Um, Kev, I remember when Kev was at 
Uh, I think my first time seeing Kev, he was like mm, maybe twelve or thirteen thousand subscribers. Yeah, he might have even been a little less than that. I might be giving him more than what he had. But at that time, I had more subscribers than Kev. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, Kev was just basically the guy, man, that spoke on the colognes and everything. You know, he was speaking on, you know, type of suits and, you know, all the flavors. Is, man, he just was cold with it. And so I always told pimps, man, go check out, you know what I mean, Kevin Samuels, man. You got to check this guy out, you know, because he be clean and he be talking about the colognes and he just got the appearance thing down, Pat, Check dude out. And uh, I told you guys, man, during the pandemic, listen, man, um, I had went away because, you know, I just got to Canada. I got in this Canada, man, and the Raptors had won the championship, and it was money everywhere. So, you know, y'all know my lifestyle. You know what I mean? It was just so much money to be had and so many hoes to knock. <laughs> it was so much pimping going on. I just wanted my memories to be, I was like, man, I ain't got time for YouTube. So y'all remember I was off YouTube for over a whole year, you know? And I was, you know, still glance at YouTube every now and then, but I wasn't doing no videos. You know, I wasn't doing no videos at this time. I come in people's comment section, show a little support, and then I bounce. I only I come in O'Shea's uh shit just to support. But man, listen, I never forget, man. Uh just taking y'all back through memory lane is when um Jap, we was I was talking to Minister Jap, and we was sitting over there chopping it up, and he was like, "Man, a lot didn't change, man, since you've been gone, bro." He's like, "Man, a lot of people there was little guys, there's big guys now, man. We're doing their thing." He said, "I even got a thousand people on the regular watching me every day. I go live." He said, "Remember Kevin Samuels?" I was like, "Yeah." He said, "Man, Kevin Samuels got fifteen hundred people up in there when he go live." I said, Kevin Samuels got 1500 when he go live? He was like, yes. You know? So it wasn't too long after that that Kev went viral. You know? Matter of fact, just out of memory, man. Hold on. I just feel like that. We going to get to my message. But I just feel like that, man. It's just special, you know, because I'll never forget, man. It was just everywhere. You could not get on. You could not. You couldn't get on social media without hearing this. Let's go back to memory lane. Y'all ain't going nowhere. I'm going to get to my message. Hold on. I just want to sit up there. Let's just go through it one more again. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, my God. And the reason why it was so funny is when Kev said, ma'am, don't make me say it. Do you not understand that I started sitting over there just, uh, I used to say, that, bitch, don't make me say it. It was the way Kev said, don't make me say it. <laughs> All right, man, let's go back through memory lane for a little bit before Sin get into his message, man. Let's go. I just want to sit up there, man. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Those were hers. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, are you a PhD? Uh, no. I'm a PhD. How many dollars you got? Uh, one. Really? I'm sorry? What kind of dog is it? He's a cane corso. He's a what? A cane corso. What is that in English? Um, it's a larger dog, and their breed is meant for guarding and protecting. And they're very protective of their home and their family. Okay, so what's your disagreement? Um, honestly, I don't have a disagreement. I just came in here because I honestly want some advice from you. It says disagreement day. Oh, I know, but this is my 
first time catching it on live. Normally I'm asleep. <laughs> and um, you have a job? I do. I own a business. Okay, so I do too. And I do have a question. If you but I have a business. And if you wanted my advice, you could always book a session if you can't catch us at the show live. Yeah, I'm definitely, I was trying to go online um, earlier. But, but, but all you have to do, man, but see, what kind of business do you own? I own a pet grooming, doggy daycare, and indoor Okay, so farm. what you're basically trying to do is I have a disagreement day, and you basically came in and said, damn your topic. I want to ask you what I want to ask you. And okay. that's. But you are more than welcome to go on my website and purchase your time to talk with me one on one, because what you're trying to do is rather rude. But I will go ahead and do it because I'm going to use this as a teaching lesson. How old okay. are you? How old are you? I'm 35. Are you five years old? 35 years old, and you're a business owner. Uh huh. Uh huh. And what's your question? Um. So uh, my issue is, ha well, I want to know. At what point when I'm just meeting a guy, do I tell him that I'm a business owner? Because um, my problem is that when I try to date down and I the conversation comes up to where I own a business, um, the guy is either like, hey, can I come join in on you on that business? Or can I put some money and be a business partner? And I'm not looking for that. And I honestly... Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I need to be clear on this subject. Where are you? Where are you at? North Carolina. And you're saying when to tell somebody you own a business? Because um, I find when I date down, God uh -huh. see an interest and want to be like a business partner. And um, I'm learning that maybe I need a high value man because that's what. Well, I first off. Um, Ma'am, I really don't understand. Uh, what kind of man are you talking about? Because um, owning a business is no different than having a job, in my opinion. And so I'm, I'm not getting what you're saying. When should you? I'm not understanding why this is an issue. If you're, if you're, uh, what kind of men are you? What kind of men are you dating? Um, I try to give, I try to give guys that not. Yeah. A you try to do what? I try to give guys that's not on my level a chance. Why? What do you mean on your level? What does that mean? That's making six figures or more. But I don't under okay. You try to give guys who are not on your level a chance. Why? And I'm because I want I honestly want a six figure guy. Uh, is what I'm realizing. Okay, I'm so let me just go ahead and net it out for you. You ready? Uh-huh. The guys you want aren't asking you out. Well, um, I haven't been putting myself out there, honestly. But you put yourself out there enough for the guys you don't want or relink you to ask you out. Those are like guys I met online. Right. Been... So, again... The men you want are not asking you out. See, you ladies do this. You go and deal with men who you feel are beneath you, and then you ask how to fix them. I'm not beneath you. I don't know how to fix a guy that doesn't that's down there. That's not my concern. The better question is, why can't you get a guy on your level? That's, that's the real question. Advice. Well, the I first thing. Well, well, first of all, I would tell you what I said in here automatically is a problem. Why you would come onto a show that you know is a disagreement day? It's selfish. It's like, well, I, yes, ma'am. It's self. It's like I want what I want. I, I don't. I don't say things for no reason. That's why I asked you questions. You're 35 years old, a business owner. That means you understand what business is, and you know this is a business. And I have a and I have a show title. And you said, "Damn your show title! I want to talk to you." But you could have went to my business and booked time to talk to me. But you wanted what you wanted, how you wanted. I'm sorry. No, it's but the, and I'm using this as lesson. That's the problem with too many of you black women. You don't do shit the right way with black men. That was improper. 
And when I even when I told you the right way, you still were like, uh, well, whatever. So I'm gonna use this. When was the last time you had a relationship? Um, like the end of last year around December. How long did it last? A year. A year? Uh, and was that man, uh, did you go to college? Did I go to college? Yes. No, sir. Okay, and how long have you owned your own business? Nine years. And how And how long have you been making six figures or more? Um, the last three. Okay, why do you need a man making six figures? Um, because I'm finding out that the guys that I date that's not, it's not working out. What does it have to do with money? Because I feel like um, I need a guy that I can respect and admire and I'm a bitch ambition and I want a guy that has that drive too. And when he doesn't, I find myself, you know, encouraging him like, hey, babe, you can do this and you can do that. And then, All right, so in North Carolina... <laughs> How, what percentage of the population, what percentage of men in this country make six figures or more? I think it's like 5%. I'm not Closer, sure. closer to 10. So, okay. oh, 10%. All right. So, the question is, what do those men who make that kind of money, who all women tend to want, what do they want? I feel like they want arm candy, somebody who can... Um, have more to bring to the table than just looks, but um, also bring balance to their life. I feel like I can help them out on... Um, okay, slow down. I'm not understanding. You said they want arm candy, then you contradicted yourself. You want, but they want somebody that more than just looks. Yeah, arm candy, but something behind, you know, bring with it and... You know more in depth. Do you own, do you know any men who make six figures or more? My dad and my uncle. Do you uh, excuse me? Do you know any men that you are related to that make six figures or more? I'm related to. Yeah, men that you are personal. not related to. Not on a personal level. So you don't know them. You don't know what they want, but you want them. Ma'am, I'm going to suggest that you really don't know what you want. <clears throat> and saying six figures is just something that you get taken from out there. But I'm not hearing this rooted to anything. But what do you want ultimately? Do you want to be married? Children? What? Yes, I want to be married. Do you want any children? Yes. How many? Um, I have a son now, so... Okay. How old is your son? He's 13. Where's the father? He's not in, a, in his life. I well, didn't ask he, that. I said, where's the father? Well, he's not like in it like I would like him to be. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and take this down. Ma'am, men who make the kind of money you're talking about have options. And typically, I don't want to deal with women who are have 13-year-old sons, who are used to dating men. Who, this doesn't sound appealing to the kind of man you're talking about. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but um, I was thinking once I start booking session with you that... Um, I can't change men. I know, but I can approve myself and I feel like I have a lot to offer to those type of meetings. Oh, okay, but see, you should have stopped right there. I just told you I cannot change men. And you said, once right. I book a session with you, I'm not a miracle worker. I'm telling right. you what they want. And you're still right. saying, yeah, but I want them. They don't want you. But I have been working on myself this year and... um. I, okay, ma'am, but okay, 35, 13-year-old son with a sketchy father. Why would a man who's in the top 10% of earners who women across the country want, want that? Um, Because I have a, 
want to offer, um, I feel like... Would you want your son to... If you had a son making that kind of money, would you want him to bring home a woman who had a 13-year-old son from a sketchy father? Or would you prefer him to get a woman who had no children, was younger and easier to get on his program? Depending on his age. See, um, this is, this, see, this, see, see what I mean? See what I mean? This goes so deep for black women. They will even, that uh, should have been an easy question. No, I I'm would sorry. not want my son to bring, I want the best for my son. That should have been the appropriate answer. That's why I sat up. That is bullshit. You should want the best for your son. Of course. But this I is, did. but, and are you thinking, <clears throat> if he brought home then, a woman, then, yes, I feel like I'm the exception to the rule. But no, I you're not. It, that's that's the problem. You all think you're the exception to the rule, but, but your life has proven to you that you're not. My love life is not that good. I agree with you. Because that's I, my point. And ma'am, and that's my point. You ladies all feel like, listen. You ladies all feel like you're the exception to the rule. And then when someone like myself comes along and gives you a, a dose of reality, instead of just accepting it, it's like, yeah, but, yeah, but I'm special. You don't know any men on this level that are not your father, that aren't related to you. That means you don't know these men. You don't know where to go get them. You don't know what they want, but you're still saying, Pick me. They don't want mid 30 year old baby mamas. I'm trying to be polite, man, but they don't want those. Can I ask you a question? Did you hear what I said? Yes. Why is that so? Okay, go ahead. Why is it so? Go ahead. Because um, my from my point of view i feel like i, I get what you're saying that they, they, they do have better options but also those better options are younger girls those younger girls don't necessarily are necessarily 20 year olds are not necessarily attracted to 45 year olds bullshit, um, bullshit. i'm 51 and I, and I can't beat them off with a stick that's another one on you lies no younger women are always younger women are attracted to older men what are you talking about so can you see me? Yes, I can. Okay. So do you feel like a woman like me? Uh-huh. What would you rank yourself on a scale from one to 10? You cannot use seven. Would I rate myself? Mm -hmm, just your face. Uh, my face when I wake up, five, but when I put myself together, six. Okay. And how tall are you? Five, five. Dress size. I'm sorry? Your dress size. A three. Okay, so that makes you, if you give yourself a five, that's average. Yes. So average looking women tend not to get high earning men. They tend to get average men. So, um, did you, did you, I mean, stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Breathe and digest. You're 35 years old and you can look around and see the world. You don't tend to see higher earning men with average looking women off rip. If you do see them, they got them. They got their average looking woman when they were both really young and he built his way up. But a man earning the kind of money you're talking about does not go for an average looking woman. I mean, my body is not average, so. But you're, ma'am, you please don't make me say it. Oh. Uh, say what? Huh? Please don't make me say it. I really just wanted some advice. I love your. you. Know, I'm giving you. I'm giving you advice, but you're not taking it. The I'm, advice is, ma'am, ma'am, you're average looking at best. Uh, I'm taking it in, but. Okay, but you're not accepting the fact that, okay. Average looking women, average looking woman who's older, average looking older woman with a 13 year old son, 
Average looking woman with a 13 year old son with a sketchy baby daddy. This gets worse every time I say something. And now you're asking for a man who's in the top 10% of men. You don't qualify for one. And you're making, I mean, I don't, I don't want to have to go there. But when you put in the, all these other factors, why can't you just get a man that's an average guy? Sometimes I feel like um, in order to fully submit, I have to feel like he's in Well, then you're going to then you're going to die alone. How about that? You, all right, let me just cut to the chase, ma'am. Uh, you can feel like what you want to, but women like you die alone. Straight up. Because you think you're better than the men that you qualify for. And the only reason, honestly, ma'am, that I can see a woman like yourself really thinking you deserve more is because you earn more, because you earn more money than most people around you in North Carolina. But if your ass worked at the post office, you would not think so highly of your opportunities. And that's the reality. We don't, men don't care about your money. Not the kind of men that you want. We don't care about your money. It ain't ours. We care about the fact that you are older and you got kids. And you're average. And your reality of your life has showed you that. You don't have the kind of men that you want knocking on your door trying to find you. See, what we've done in this country, this world, is we've told women like yourself that you can have it all and you got a Prince Charming who's six foot, a hundred, six feet tall, six figure income, jawline, all this other kind of stuff. And I'm sorry, man. No. Most people get average people, especially average people. And you're an average person. I mean, let's Damn. be real. You're not running Microsoft. You got you had a pet grooming business. You've been making six figures for the last three years. Okay. <laughs> but if I'm looking at you, but if I looked at you and I took all that off of you, all the eyelashes and all the hair, what do you look like under there? I mean, I look the same. I'm just No, you don't. Because if you did, you wouldn't have all that on. I'm sorry? No, you don't. You don't look the same because if you did, you wouldn't have all that on. So what is your advice for uh, women that... All right, I'll tell you my advice, man, because you're not listening to me. This is why I always recommend you need, you need to need therapy. Everyone, people think most of us in the black community need therapy, but you're not, you're not dealing with reality. I asked you about your child's father and you couldn't answer me. But it doesn't sound like you're too proud of him. How's your, what kind of student is your child? He's an A student. A what kind of, does he have any behavioral problems? No, he actually got a YouTube channel and he's trying. Uh, I don't need that. I don't need no, no, just, no. But where is it? But his daddy is still. If his daddy is alive, does he have a, a relationship with his father? Yeah, he does. Then what's your issue with him? Um, he's not um, business minded like my father and my uncle. And then why did you was. choose to make a baby with him before you got married? Young and dumb. I was sixteen. Exactly, was and that cost. See yeah. that, that young lot. and dumb shit. Let me stop you right here. That young and dumb shit you black women throw out as if it's supposed to get. A, listen and listen well, women. Young and dumb is not a get out of jail free card. It doesn't go woof and change the fact. You still have to carry that consequence. And men are not rushing up to be stepfathers to 13 year olds. What would be better is if you honestly sat down and asked yourself, what value can I bring to a man? And I know that what I can. Well, all right. What can, what value, what, what is it? What is it? Hmm. I can help him with his business. I'm very business minded on the um, end of helping organize, hiring, 
I plant um, into planting my own garden. So I can definitely plant um, into um, improving my elegance with um, just self improvement and working on myself. And man, at um, 35 and, years old, at 35 years old, here's what you told me. I can help him with his business. Do respect, ma'am. Um, and I mean no disrespect, but 20 to 30 percent of people own businesses. What about the 70 to 80 percent of men who don't own them? That means that doesn't matter. Uh, that means nothing to the average man. Then the next thing you said, I can plant. Ma'am, that means nothing to most people because we go to grocery stores. <laughs> then you say self-improvement. You've had I, I gave you a shot at saying what you have to offer to men, and you said nothing that we value. What do you value? What do you book a session? Book a session. Book a session. I'm not I'm, doing this. Nope, 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 nope. I'm done. I'm done. I've, I've tried to go around, but this is happening. The older you ladies get, the more you get set in your ways. Book a session because I don't want to do this in public, man. Because you seem like a sweet woman, but you don't, but you're not getting it. You're being so mean. I'm not being, don't tell me I'm being mean. I've, but I'm about to be mean. I get tired of you broads telling me I'm being mean because you cannot handle the goddamn truth. You called my show on a day that you ain't even supposed to be here. And I honored the call and sat here and tried to help you. And I'm telling you, telling me I'm being mean. Get the fuck out of my phone. I'm tired of y'all doing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard for me. I'm addicted to good lies. Yeah. We gave it. That used to be my thing. Bitch, get your ugly ass off. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Bitch, sit your, bitch, sit your Oliver Miller looking ass down. Get tired of you motherfucking bitches looking like your pansies and motherfucking UFOs and animals and shit that left Brookfield Zoo. Na, 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 na. Yes. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Where the hoes is. Yes. Sing on me pimping wrong around. <laughs> oh, shit. Listen. Listen, man. That. That was the video that changed everything. That video right there. That nigga went diamond. He went diamond. He ain't go platinum. He went diamond. You could not go nowhere on Instagram, nowhere on Facebook. It was everywhere. It feel like, I ain't even gonna lie, it feel like two seconds ago. I'm talking about... It was everywhere. You couldn't go nowhere with Kevin Samuels, 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 Kevin Samuels. Everything was Kevin Samuels, Kevin Samuels. You couldn't go nowhere without hearing Kev. And y'all couldn't take it. Can we just, can I just keep it real with you? You couldn't take it. The YouTubers, they couldn't take it. I'm more funnier than him. I dress, I'm, I'm more handsome. More. I'm more. I, 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 that's my content. You, you had so that shit had so many niggas in their feelings. To see Kev just go viral like that, that had so many of you pussy ass niggas in your feelings. See, I ain't got a jealousy bone in my body. I don't wear cheap perfume called jealousy. You know what I'm saying? I can talk that shit because can't no nigga or won't no nigga ever accuse me of being jealous. You just never hear that. You know, I'm possessed by a spirit of flyness that just won't allow me to have one jealous bone in my motherfucking body. You know, but it was so much hatred. It was so much jealousy for Kev. You know, y'all hated to see it, man. But I just got to keep it 100. I loved it. And that's why it hurt me that this man is gone. Because I love seeing Kev up top. When the song, when the old school song, damn it feel good to see people up on it. That's me. I love to see a black man shining. I love to see a black man doing his thing. 
Me and Kev didn't agree, you know, in totality on everything. I have a different perspective, those that know my doctrine. Kev was promoting tricking. I'm over here promoting pimping. Two different lanes. But I respect it, and I love to see a successful black man doing his thing. I loved it, man. I loved it. They hated it, but I loved it. And I never get to see it again, and that hurts. You know what I'm saying? I loved it, man. Sometime late night, after I finish a live or I, after finish coming in, I would come in. Sometimes Kev would be live. How many of y'all done, done that? You didn't got off work or you didn't finish campaigning or why you was campaigning. You got on YouTube late night and late night Kev just sharp as hell, you know, with the beautiful scenery, with the beautiful flashy, just 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 classy, just uh, real Mackish, real playerish background. Come on, man. I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss that, homie. Yes. This is a nigga that used to be in my comment section. And the nigga went from being in the comment section. He went from being the cologne guy to just exploding. I loved it. I loved it. You can't say that nigga ain't have no game. It's so much to learn from Kev. When, matter of fact, I ain't got to go in order. Look, that man... What he did, because he always been clean, but we're going to get to the appearance. But Kev knew how to reinvent himself. That is something that a lot of you don't know how to do. I'm not just talking to squares. I'm talking to pimps also. There are so many individuals, man, in the game and outside the game. You don't know how to reinvent yourself. And because you don't know how to reinvent yourself, you're stuck. You don't ha know how to move forward. You don't know what to do. You're in a new era. And you're, matter of fact, it might be some guys that just got out of prison. You don't know what to do. You're still stuck in the time that before you got locked up, you're still stuck in that era. And we're in 2022. You don't have the game on how to reinvent yourself. It's not that you can't prosper. It's not that you can't have your way, but you're going to have to reinvent yourself. Some of you are a little too bland. Some of y'all are a little boring. Some of y'all don't know how to dress. Some of you don't know how to conduct yourself. You're going to learn. You're going to have to learn how to reinvent yourself. Otherwise, you're going to get lost. Kev knew how to reinvent himself. And that's why Kev kept on winning. Kev kept on doing this thing. Why? Kev knew how to reinvent himself. Go look at the first video that he ever did with O'Shea. You know, where he's speaking on appearance. Look at that Kevin Samuels. And then look at the Kevin Samuels. You know what I mean? That's over a million subscribers. That, that's two different people. He reinvented himself. He totally reinvented himself. And I've seen so many in the lifestyle that didn't know how to reinvent themselves. And everything just stopped. Once one era was over, it was like their whole pimping, their, their whole campaign, their whole, their whole game, it just stopped. I've seen it in the music industry. I've seen it with certain artists. It, they didn't lose their gift. They didn't lose their talent. They didn't lose their ministry. You know what I'm saying? But their image was stuck in another era. Their stuff was outdated. They didn't know how to reinvent themselves to keep the ball rolling. You know? I'm talking about you can look at from all walks of life. Everybody can learn from Kev in that particular aspect. You know what I mean? Some got the game, but most don't have the game on how to reinvent themselves. Kev was an observer. Kev observed many representation of different walks of life. That's why if you on a uh, course on my Patreon looking at them old videos, when you look at the comment section, yes, you're going to see Kev. What was Kev doing? Paying attention. So when they brought Kevin up for Tommy Sotomayor, you were like, ooh, he called into the show. I'm like, was that supposed to make Kev look bad? Yes, Kevin was observing. Kev was putting it together, baby. While you guys were sitting over there 
arrogant because of your talent, arrogant because of the gifts that God gave you. Kevin was working hard. He was thinking smart. He was having sleepless nights. He was sitting over there thinking. He was putting it together, man. He was observing. He was being watchful. You know, some of us, you know, are gifted. We're very talented. And our work ethic is, is, is non-existent. Non-existent. And then we get upset when somebody goes past you, when somebody having more success than you, you want to sit up there and get mad and throw a temper tantrum and say, damn, why, why, why I ain't blowing up like that? You ain't working hard. You're not at it. You're not serious. You just think the world pulls a fall in your lap because you have a gift, because you're talented. But you're not putting that work in, though. So, you know, other individuals might have more capabilities, might have a, a better uh, ministry. Ministry might be a little more dynamic than the next individual. But if that next individual is working hard and having sleepless nights studying and putting it together, they're going to blow right past you. And we just seen that. There are many individuals that I can tell you that's more funnier than Kev on YouTube. I can tell you about some individuals that have some great talking points on certain topics. You know what I mean? That man, they, who you'd be like, man, this dude is cold. But work ethic wasn't the same. <clears throat> Not beating up on my brother because Minister Jap is my brother. That's my nigga. But Minister Jap, if you, anybody that does uh, been watching Minister Jap, for a minute, you know that Minister Jap would do some good videos. And then Minister Jap, man, to sit up there and disappear on your ass, man, for months. The consistency ain't the same. Just like Freeze. Freeze will give you some good game. We'd be like, whoo, man, this is cold. Then he'll leave you for some months. You know what I mean? M me, myself, I've done it for some months. I've done it for a year. You know what I mean? Consistency wasn't there. Work ethic wasn't the same. You know what I mean? I can name different other individuals. You know what I mean? On YouTube. I'm not going to name, but they're very talented. But, you know, not. it just wasn't consistent. It wasn't, they, they didn't stay at it. And so you can't be mad at another individual that really wanted it, that really was putting in that work. You just thought life was going to come to you just because of your gifts and you being gifted. But no, you got to put that work in. It's so much to learn from Kel. Because like I said, it was, it was other people that was bigger than Kel. Kel sent many emails to different people. You know what I mean? When can we collab? When can we collab? He wanted to do collaborations. He was always endeavoring to collab with people. You know, but at that time, people was bigger than Kev. At that time, people was having more people in the, uh, the live chat than Kev. People's uh, super chat was looking different than Kev. You know, it was like, oh, man, I don't want to uh, do no collab with no damn Kevin Samuels, man. This dude born, man. And Kev continued to work on himself. He continued to look at the capacities where he was coming short in. And he took the time out to reinvent himself. And he came back even better and better and greater and greater. And ended up surpassing the individuals, you know what I mean, that, <laughs> you know what I mean, that he was sending emails to the collab. Now them same individuals is sending emails to him to collab. See how that go? The same individuals that Kev was saying, yeah, man, you know, when can we collab or when can we, we can do a video? Them same individuals now, you know what I mean, was hitting him up. You got to remember, man, there was a time when the biggest thing on YouTube in the black sector was Tommy Sotomayor. Tommy Sotomayor was the biggest thing. We just going to keep it real. Tommy was doing his thing. You could not get on Facebook and not see Tommy. You could not get on YouTube and not see Tommy. Tommy kept going viral. He was the man during this time. And 
Of course, when somebody is the man, what do you do? You study the man. So, you know, um, when a, a, a so-called a, a, a person in that position says, hey, he took my message. Or, and I don't agree with that fully. But what I'm, I'm simply showing you is when everybody was sleeping, Kevin was watching. When everybody was being lazy, when everybody was sitting over there, you know what I mean, just comfortable, you know what I mean, Kev was putting in that work. Kev was, Kev was rationalizing, and I like to say rationalizing and organizing his thoughts, you know, putting it together, getting it together, man. Kev had a plan. He knew what he wanted to do, and he did it. And he didn't do that you know, with playing around. He didn't, just imagine if he was lazy. Just imagine if Kevin said to himself, oh, I'm too old. Just imagine if Kevin had an attitude as I'm in my 50s, you know what I mean? I might as well stop, you know. This I probably get good enough where I can just pay a few bills, but I never touch a million subscribers. I'm in my 50s, man. Ain't nobody sitting over there, man, you know, trying to watch me. I ain't as funny as uh, Tommy. I ain't, I I don't, you know, have the uh, uh, people skills like O'Shea, so I might as well just, you know, I'm in my, I'm in my fifties, man. I might as well leave this shit alone. As a man think it, so is he. As a man think it, so is he. And if Kevin had them particular thoughts, you know what I mean. If he had allowed the spirit of depression to come in. If he allowed the spirit of discouragement to come in, that he was too old and too bland and he wasn't as talented and gifted as the next, he would have never obtained the level of success that he did. Never. His mindset was completely different. He did not allow his age to defeat him. Many of you think, oh, I'm in my 30s. Oh, I'm in my 40s. Oh, I'm in my 50s. Oh, I'm in my 60s. Oh, I'm in my 70s. You know, if you sincerely, earnestly want something, you're not going to allow your age to hinder that from happening. If you earnestly want that, if you're serious about it, you're going to put in that work. You know, you might even matter of fact, you might be uh, overweight right now. You might be obese right now. You might be out of shape right now. And you might be saying to yourself, oh, man, you know, I never look like that again because, you know, I'm in my 40s. I'm in my, you know, it can't be father time. And I agree with you simply because you actually believe that. And as a man think it, so is he. So if you actually believe that and you accept that, then that's the only reason why it's correct. Because you believe that and you accept it, you received it and you allowed that negativity. You allowed that devilation to digest in your spirit. And that's why you won't produce the greatness that God put in you because you didn't digested some bullshit. You didn't di uh, digested some negativity. And that's going to basically get, you know, what I mean, more negativity. That's going to give birth, you know, what I mean, the more negative and demonic and satanic spirits and spirits of depression that's going to give birth to transgressions. Yeah. But Kevin didn't allow his age. He didn't say to himself, you know, what I mean, ain't no sense in me doing this. You know what I mean? I never reached that level. You know, as a man think it, so is he. Kevin thought that he was the shit. Kevin thought that he could do it. Kevin was brilliant minded. You know, they can come on these lives and they can try to minimize, you know, his greatness all they want. They can try to minimize his brilliance all they want. But while they're doing that, you know what I mean? They're just basically wasting time, you know what I mean? Talking about a man that, you know, on a level that they'll never reach because they don't have that mindset. Here's a man, I want you to pay attention. Here's a man that might not have been as talented or gifted as the next as far as maintaining the audience and having everybody laughing and all of that shit, you know? You got to remember, uh, remember, Kevin was bland. I'm just going to keep it real. Back in 2017, man, Kevin was bland as hell. Like some of y'all eat certain foods at Whole Foods 
you know, and it's bland and don't got no seasoning in it. That was Kevin. But he worked on himself. He reinvented himself. And because of that, that's why we're that's why we're here. That's why we're talking right now. You know what I mean? That's why you that's why you feel sad right now. That's why you're missing him right now. Because of him re uh, reinventing himself. Now, if he had just stayed uh, himself and just said, you know, I don't got to work on myself. Or I just I just leave it alone. It just is what it is. I'm in my 50s. And he just accepted, you know what I mean, just his, his that state of mind, just that circumstance. Then, yes, he would have stayed in that circumstance. He would have just stayed old, bland, old, 50-something-year-old Kev that was just on YouTube, uh, having 100 or 200 at the most uh, people in the live uh, comment section. He would have stayed on that level. But he reinvented himself. And that appearance, like I said, he would have never been able to achieve that if he was fat and out of shape. People get mad at him for speaking reality, for speaking the truth. But the thing is, you know what I mean? Um, Kevin would have never been able to look like the best definition of professionalism if he wasn't, you know what I mean, slim. Just imagine him saying the things that he said out of his mouth if he was fat and out of shape. If he had titties, if he was, you know what I mean? Out of, uh, it don't matter if he had a suit on. Oh, man, let me let me talk for a minute. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even matter if he had a Louis Vuitton Gucci suit on. He could have had a five, ten thousand dollars suit on. If he had been fat and out of shape, how could he ever preach a message or teach a message concerning discipline when he looked like foolishness? You know? So you looked at him, you watched him because he looked sharp. Before he said anything out of his mouth, you looked at his appearance because he was clean. You liked his presentation before you even heard his conversation. You liked the background, the scenery. You love his appearance, his attire. You know? And... I want this to minister to some of you because some of you, you know, uh, oh, I'm not, a, I don't wear suits. I'm not into that. Or I don't wear, I don't dress casual. I dress like this or I dress like, hey, I'm just, just want to just drop something on you. That just might be what's hindering you. That just might be what's hindering you. You know, you might got a great message. But your presentation is all wrong. And I keep telling you, you can have some information that's impeccable, but it won't be acceptable to the people because all things must be presentable before it's acceptable. You got to change your presentation. Your presentation can just be all wrong. And that's why you're not getting to the destination of success because your appearance is the interference. You need to change that. You know, uh, Kev said, you know, uh, Saturday, you know what I mean, with the suits and everything like that. But you guys remember, you know what I mean? At, at, it used to be a time that it was only me, Freeze, you catch Dre every now and then, you know what I mean, Kevin Samuels, um, and of course, you know, Brother Ben, you know, the Muslims and things like that. But we were the only ones that was coming on YouTube suited and booted with suits on, shirt and a tie. You know, clean. Now, of course, you know what I mean? Sin used to go live in an empty ass room. But when I did go live, you know, in an empty ass room, you still see me basically clean. So what am I saying? Some of you, man, listen, um, uh, might take this the wrong way. But let me just say some things. The reason why the message went so far with Kevin is because of his presentation. Yes, the information was cool and everything like that, but the information would have never got a chance if, you know, his presentation wasn't right. Compare him to Tommy Sotomayor. Tommy might say, I said it first. I did it this, I did that. But, you know, not just his lifestyle, but look at his appearance. Compare his appearance to Kevin's appearance. I'm going to let that minister to you. Look at his appearance. Look at the way that he dressed in comparison to the way that Kev dresses. 
completely different, correct? Exactly. Image is everything. Before you even get to say anything out your mouth, man, you know what I mean? You got to speak with your presence. You got to speak with your appearance. It's just like in the pimp game. It might be some times when a pimp is endeavoring to have that hoe, um, you know, and, 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 and of course, I'm speaking to some people. Some people don't even understand the lifestyle, but I break some things down to you. Um, when a pimp sees a hoe talking to a client, talking to a trick, he's supposed to be speaking in the vernacular of silence. He has nothing to say to that woman, nothing at all to say to a woman that's talking to a trick at all. But he can still speak without speaking if he clean as hell. He can still speak. He can still represent his pimping. He can still sit up there, you understand me, and magnify and glorify and exalt his pimping without saying one word if he clean and fly as hell. Oh, man, let that register. You know, Pippin might, you know what I mean, come through, you know what I mean, uh, at a bar, and she was sitting down with a trick, and he couldn't speak to her. Why? Because she was at the money. A hose place is in the trick's face, and a pimp's place is in the hose face, but a pimp ain't going to be in the hose face if that hoe is in the hose place, which is in the trick's face. So if she's talking to that particular trick, the pimpin ain't got nothing to say, but guess what? He's saying a lot if he's clean. He's saying a lot if he's suited and booted. And I'm listen, I'm not saying that if you have to, you know, uh, mandatory for you to wear. I'm not trying to push the suit on you. I'm just simply saying that when you're serious and you want to be taken serious, when you want to represent business, when you want to represent professionalism, I don't know uh, another attire that's better than a suit when it comes to representing professionalism. I don't know no attire that's better than a suit when it comes to representing business. I don't. You know, I don't. So uh, when it came to Kev's presentation, man, it was everything. You can learn from Kev, man. Like I said, some of you have some impeccable messages, but your appearance, your image is all off. In the music industry, you have a lot of people who can rap their ass off, uh, melodic and, 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 and uh, you know, completely anointed. And, 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 you know, just, man, they got a Karen Clark Shear, Kim Burrell, Faith Evans, you know, Lil Mo type of voice. I mean, man, they cold with it vocally. But at the same particular time, you know, these same individuals with all this talent in the world, they might have the wrong image. And if you have the wrong image, it's still hard to sell you. So even though you can sing your ass off, your image is all wrong and it's you're not marketable. And if you're not marketable, we're not going to have a profitable time. You know, good markability is a necessity, you know, and that man knew how to market himself well. Yeah. Of course, you know, when he spoke, yeah, you felt that he was a, you know, an eloquent speaker pertaining to whatever topic that he decided to speak on. But before he said anything out of his mouth, the man looked like the best definition of professionalism. So you was forced, you was compelled to take him serious because it looks like he was taking himself serious. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? When he opened his mouth, you didn't see yellow teeth. Oh, man, let me just talk for a little minute. You didn't see brown teeth. You didn't see yellow teeth. Some You got some people, when they go live, you look all into their mouth. It look like a bunch of deadly diseases. It look like plagues. It look like viruses. It look like the 13th chapter of Revelations. It just looked completely demonic and satanic. So you might be saying some meaningful, beautiful, powerful things, but your breath, your the color, the different colors of your teeth, the different colors of your gums is hindering the people from hearing anything that you're saying and conveying within the conversation. But see, when you seen Kevin, he was just clean. You know, so, of course, when people would listen, be like, ah, 
I don't know what he talking about, but uh, I, I, I see what he talking about. I see what he talking about. But let me just say this to some of you guys. You might even be a minister. You might even be a man of God right now. I heard this one guy on another platform uh, quote a scripture, and he totally misrepresented the word of God. You have different people on YouTube that's just talking to be talking, and because you guys are ignorant, you know, you just basically complying to what's ever being said. But the young man um, was speaking on Kevin and he said everything that Kevin said was vanity. And he went on to quote a scripture uh, saying that bodily exercise only profit a little. As to say that, you know, Kevin always spoke on the appearance, the appearance. And he said, that's vain. That's that's vanity. But what the idiot didn't understand was when you quoted the scripture that says that bodily exercise profit a little. When you look at the word of God, we can do a lot with a little. It didn't say that the it didn't say that bodily exercise profit nothing. It said that it profit a little. So if it profit a little, guess what that means? It means it profits. And I remember one scripture says you can move. You know what I mean? If you just have the faith of a, a, a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So we can do a lot with a little. Oh, man. Like, I don't mean, you know, it's just the preacher in me. That's just my ministry. But he had just, he just totally just gave the wrong understanding to the people concerning that. To as to say, you can just be fat and obese and over 400 pounds and you know what I mean? Just look any kind of way and you can look, you can have a body that look like wet bread. You can do a bunch of bread that got water on it. You can just be soggy. You should just be comfortable looking like a sloppy Joe sandwich. You should just be comfortable looking like the best definition of some bullshit and mess. Come on, man. Appearance does matter. And let me, can I just keep that thing real? Even in spirituality, a woman of God, she ain't looking just for no uh, guy, you know, that's robust, that look like he uh, a, a small fry from McDonald's away from dying. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's good that he's a man of God, but she's also looking at the appearance of the man of God. He's looking at the appearance of the woman of God. Come on now. So I've, I've seen certain people just, just they speaking and. It's just no wisdom being conveyed, you know, at all, you know, because see, when, the, when that inside is right, the outside is going to be right, too. Did you hear what I said? Your body is a reflection of your mind. I know some of y'all looking at you know, like what your body is a reflection of your mind. That's why you seeing a lot of fucked up. You know, what I mean, bodies, you see them, uh, men, you know, that are depressed. I've been there before. I'm provoking you to get out of that because that's not manly. You can't stay there. But Pete, my mama died. I understand that. My mama died, too. I was very depressed. Gained so much weight after my mom died. I understand. I've been there before, but you can't stay there. That's not manly. Get out of that. You got things to do. You got a ministry. You got a destiny. You got prerequisites to fulfill. Get your ass up. You know? And so listen, you know, um, when it comes to, you know, appearance, because, man, I, did, I could just stay on that for a while, you know, because I, I keep saying that. That man would have never been able to reach that level of success, being fat, being out of shape. No. He wouldn't have. And that's why a lot of you are offended, because when reality is when he called you overweight, when he said that you were the weight of a linebacker, you really couldn't say nothing in, to him. Why? Because here is a black man who's clean, that's tall, that looks studious. And he's 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 not fat. He's not out of shape. He don't got titties everywhere. He don't got a belly, but he don't have a stomach that's hanging over his knees. So when he said something to you, yes, it hurt your feelings. 
You could you you try to say something, it's like, damn, what could I say? He looks professional. He sounds intellectual. He sounds like he got some sense. So when he told me that I need to lose weight, that I'm the same size as a man, I'm the same size, you know, as a power forward or a center in the NBA, yeah, you're going to feel some type of way. It would be different if you were talking to a man, you know what I mean, that was Bam Bam Bigelow or, you know what I mean, uh, that type of size, you know, bone crusher or something. But because... He's the message that he's bringing. It even hurts even more. He can teach it. He can preach it. And the reason why he was reaching it is because when you looked upon him, when you seen his appearance, he was clean. He got away with saying whatever he wanted to say. Why? Because his appearance was together. Oh, I'm preaching and teaching to the young man. It's the power of the suit. You should have a suit. You should have some suits, man, in your collection, man. You spending all that money on them Jordans and all of that. Hey, man, get you some suits. Get you some suits, young man. I'm telling you, man, you know, them suits will take you far. Appearance, a nice a professional appearance will take you far, young man. Get you some suits. Invest in some suits. Get you some suits. What am I saying? Get clean. That's what I'm telling you to do. You know, but yeah, man, you know what I mean? From the watches to the suit, you know what I mean? They just couldn't take it. Kev was just too fly for him. He was just too professional. His attire was too right. They just couldn't take it. And even right now while he's dead, he got some people that's alive. Do you understand that Kevin Samuels has a mansion home in the location of the minds of these people? He's living in there rent free, you know, because of the things that he said, because of his because of his opinion. You know what I mean? And that's, let me speak on that, too. Oh, man, they, they, they getting ready to leave me now. I expect the numbers to decrease. I ain't expecting no super chats and no cash apps. What I'm getting ready to say. One of the reasons why Kevin was mostly really hated and disliked. Because Kevin held a bitch accountable. He did shit that you simp ass niggas was not doing. You know, every time the game want to hold these bitches accountable, here come you niggas trying to catch your grenade for a bitch. Soon as the game even put accountability in a bitch hand, here come one of you niggas diving, diving. You sitting over there, Jerry Rice in it. You Deion Sanders. You, you sitting over there. As soon as the game try to put some motherfucking responsibility, some type of accountability in their hand, here come one of you niggas. Now, I understand, you know, certain people's doctrines where the man is so great and the headship and all of that, and I respect that and I agree with that. But my only problem with guys that want to teach you uh, concerning headship and, you know what I mean, what uh, manship and what a man is and what a man, you know what I mean, the man this and the man that, it's, it's, it, he leaves no room for accountability for the woman. That's a weakness within that doctrine. Anytime, listen, I understand that God called the man to be the head. I understand that man is the leader. I understand that man is supposed to have dominion. I understand that when the woman is coming up short, when she's failing by him being the captain, by him presiding over the team, even when it's not his fault, it's his fault because he's a man and he's the leader. I understand all of that and I accept it. But when you take all the accountability in every capacity. You leave no room for this woman, you know what I mean, to have any accountability. And that's wrong. That's wrong. You got to hold a bitch accountable. The reason why you got all these DJ Envy niggas upset, the reason why you got so many voice walkers niggas in their feelings and, and so moist, all of these goofy ass niggas getting in their feelings, still speaking against the dead. Why you got these bitches that look like niggas in their feelings is because Kevin Samuels was holding the bitch accountable. 
You accountable. Did nobody tell you to have all them damn kids? Here you is, 30 years old. You looking like a hippopotamus. And you got five kids by five different men and shit. And you sitting over there, you actually want some fine-ass man that's making, you know what I mean, this amount of money. And he got this and he got this. He was making a bitch be realistic. And because you have so many weak-ass niggas that was raised by these bitches, because you remember now, you, you know, they teach the black woman is the, the teacher. She's the first teacher, and that is correct. She is the first teacher, which explains why you got all of these faggot-ass niggas. I accept that. I accept that. The black woman is the, yeah, right. She's the first teacher. That explains why you have the population of weak-ass niggas that you have right now, because she's the only teacher. In most cases, not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, you know what I mean? She's the only teacher. And that's why we got so many soft-ass niggas now. That's why we got niggas in Chicago dissing the dead now, disrespecting dead ops and shit like that. Why? Because they got it from their motherfucking mammy. They got it from their mama that ain't shit. That same demonic spirit came from their grandmama that wasn't shit. They get that same satanic spirit, it come from their great-grandmama that wasn't shit. And the great-great-grandmother that was a faggot-ass bitch. This shit, if you just trace it down, if you look at the genealogies and you follow everything in chronological order, you'll just see this, this demonic, satanic, faggot spirit that's been passed down from generation to generation. So we can understand why we got this huge population of faggot-ass niggas dissing the dead and all of that. Why? Because we see all of these black bitches in the comment section and making videos dissing the dead. These are their mothers. This is their first teacher. So we expect them to exemplify bitch-made behavior. Look at their first teacher. Look who they was taught by. Oh, man. What did what them people be saying? Done to Marco. You know what I mean? But going back to my point, no accountability. I even see certain niggas that's in the game. And when they speak, they don't want to give the woman no accountability. So I understand your problem with Kev because you got that simp shit going on in your home. You know, I understand. That's why you had a problem. A lot of y'all had a problem with Kev because in your relationship or your marriage, you know what I'm saying? Anytime when the woman do something that's wrong, here come your mark ass taking accountability for every gay ass, every contrary thing that the bitch do. She don't never get a chance to evolve. Why? Because you always getting involved, taking her, uh, taking accountability for the capacities that she falling short in. So that makes very, that make, yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that make a lot of sense, man. You know what I mean? Why y'all hated Kel? Because the nigga stayed keeping the bitch accountable, man. He, 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 while you were sitting over there taking accountabilities, while you were sitting over there trying to catch a grenade for a bitch, yeah, man, Kevin Samuels, man, that nigga was going uh, live every day holding the bitch accountable. You accountable for why you weight the weight, uh, that weight that you got. You accountable for that. All of them stretch marks that you got on your body and you ain't even had a baby and you looking like you didn't had triplets. And you ain't never had one baby before, and that's the way your body look, you accountable for that. You did that to yourself. And it's sad that a motherfucker, once they sit up there and speak the truth, the whole world want to sit up there and, and the, all these motherfuckers want to celebrate. I already know y'all going to celebrate when the Pippin die. I already know. You know what I mean? But guess what? You know what I mean? I ain't going to know about the shit, so fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to be dead. You know what I mean? God forbid. I don't want to die before my time, Lord. But I, like I said, I already know they're going to celebrate. I already know they're going to go live. I already know they're going to talk their shit. Do your thing, bitch. I'm not going to hear none of it. So it is what it is. Get your views and get your likes. You know? But I'm holding you accountable, bitch. I'm holding you accountable for why you got all of these kids by different men. I'm holding you accountable. 
You know what I mean? For looking a damn fool. I'm holding you accountable for being a peculiar, awkward, handsome looking ass bitch. I'm holding you accountable. You know what I'm saying? For that yellow and brown or that that dark stuff, you know what I mean? That's inside your toenails. You know, I'm holding you accountable for why you only got three toenails done out the 10. Bitch, I'm holding you accountable. I'm holding you accountable, huh? Yeah. I'm not trying to take Respon I'm not taking accountability, responsibility for why you getting into a continuity of looking a damn fool. I'm holding you accountable. I'm holding the mirror of truth. I'm holding this game to you, showing you the error of your ways, which is why the man has to keep producing perfection. That's why the man got to keep on being greater and greater. So when he teach and when he preach, he can really reach it because he's living it. You have to be a living message, a living solution. Because see, when you're a living solution, you can talk that shit like never before. And it hurts them to their heart. I don't think he got to, you ain't got to talk to me like this. And the only, the only guys that feel sorry for y'all sorry ass is niggas that don't know how to, that don't have no game about themselves. People always bring finances into it, but reality is, you know what I mean? It's, it's some broke-ass niggas, you know what I mean, that be coming up on rich and wealthy bitches and shit. I mean, we'll speak about that later. That's another message. You know, because I know some of y'all been taught some things that's totally contrary to this game. I'll lace your boots, you know what I mean, in another uh, video about that. But it ain't about the dead hypocrites. The uh, green papers with dead hypocrites on it ain't about that. It's about you having some game about yourself. And, and these guys don't have no game about themselves. They don't have no knowledge and wisdom, no outstanding understanding on how to preside over you or even how to approach you. So their only way of getting your attention and maintaining that is to criticize and minimize another man. He's doing the Wendy Williams, Tasha K, lovely T shit, you know what I mean, with you because he don't have no game about himself. So he got to talk about niggas like a Sinful to Pee or a Kevin Samuels or a Freeze Is It or a Dre or something like that. He got to speak down on guys like that because that's his only action, you know what I mean, to getting some pussy. That's the only opportunity he have is speaking on another black man. Doing the DJ Envy. Oh, my, I can't believe... I can't believe he would say that. Oh, my God. That is so disrespectful to black women. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. Look at the hatred that he's spilling. And that's a shame that if I tell you the truth, that is hatred. And that's why I told you we're in generation victim. Everybody's a goddamn victim. The truth can't even be taught. The truth can't even be preached with any type of form of masculinity at all. You know what I mean? Because we're in generation victim. Everybody's a victim. Everybody's hurt. Everybody's crying. Everybody's a bitch. Everybody sitting over there, you understand me, having weeping and gnashing of teeth and lamentations and all of that shit. Man, generation victim. Everybody's a victim. Everybody's hurt. Everybody been victimized. Everybody been crucified. You know, generation victim. I can't receive the truth. Why? Because you have, you have a victim mindset. Anytime the truth comes, you say, oh, you're hating. Oh, you body shaming. <laughs> All of this weak ass shit. That's weak. Very weak. Now, I agree that, you know, um, there are some approaches that can be you know, a little more smoother to uh, convey your point. But at the same, but a, a, a lot of times, you know, uh, positivity ain't going to do it. I've been telling you that. Sometimes instead of saying, uh, well, I just think that, uh, you know, because you're a beautiful woman, you know, and, you know, by you being uh, very thick, you know, and I like thick women, but I think that uh, it would be best that, you who she not gonna go for that. Sometimes a bitch need a nigga that they, hey, you, uh, you fat as hell. Yeah, you didn't you didn't lost it. Yeah, you need to sit up there, man. And, and, yeah, yeah, you've been going a little bit too hard. You've been enjoying yourself a little bit too much, bitch. You didn't got too comfortable. You know what I mean? Eating at all times of night. You're not exercising. You know what I mean? You drinking uh too much juice. You drinking too much pop. 
You're drinking way too much at all times of the night. And then you're not working out. Look at you. You got double chin trying to come in. Look at your double chin trying to come in. That ain't cute. You know what I mean? Everybody responds to different things. You know, you can say, that's why I say you got to have wisdom. It's a different approach on how to coach, you know, each and every individual to do what's needed to be done. Some people, you know what I mean? They need that tough love. They need to be, you know, rebuked. They need the spirit of reproof. You got to come with the spirit of correction. And it's got to be in a tone, you know what I mean, that's militant. You know? Um, and if you come soft on some soft shoe shit, then you ain't going to get the correct response. Instead of positive results, you're going to get insults to the game. So, you know what I mean? It's just a way to do things with different people. You got to have discernment on, okay, yeah, yeah, she can take that. Okay, she can't take that. You know what I mean? She overtly sensitive, you know, because of things that happened to her in her childhood any and everything that you say, if you even say anything in the wrong tone, you know what I mean? She going to emotionally react instead of mentally respond. So no, you wouldn't approach her like that. It's just wisdom on how, you know, to convey your, your, your point, you know? Hold on, there we go. So, you know, you got different individuals, you know what I mean? They're still in their feelings, still hurt about what Kev said to them a year ago or a year. I remember one young lady got on a live with Kev and she was digging in her nose. She was digging in her nose. She put her finger in her nose like a good two times while she was talking to Kev. And blowing her nose, all type of shit. She just, she was not feminine at all. And so when Kev corrected her, and told her what she should be doing and what she should not be doing. You know, of course, she emotionally reacted. You know, and that was the uh, video where, he, you know, he had mentioned me. But um, just keeping that thing all the way, you know, uh, 100, you know, in this generation victim, I'm speaking to the guys now, in generation victim, you got to have wisdom on how to convey a message. Otherwise, you know what I mean? You're going to be a hater of black women. <clears throat> By us being a generation victim, you can't preach and teach, you know, a message with masculinity, you know what I mean, without being, you know, a hater of black women. If you're a masculine man and if you're teaching and preaching the truth, automatically you're a hater of black women. You hate black women. Oh, my God. Why did you say it like that? Oh, my God. I see somebody in here right now. I ain't going to call you out, but I see somebody right now one night. And some of y'all remember, I had preached a message uh, a while ago called Beautiful Trash. I had preached and taught one of the coldest messages that I've ever taught. It was called Beautiful Trash. And, you know, I mean, to uh, break it all down and just speak in the language of simplicity you know, I'm just simply saying that you have some women who are highly attractive. You know, uh, man, very marketable. People would consider them to be, you know, very beautiful. But their attitude, you know what I mean? Their lack of professionalism, their lack of wisdom, you know, the way they carry themselves. By them not being a team player, you know, it's like they're a rival, they're a rival gang of success. They don't want to listen. They have a reply instead of complying to what's being said. You know, these individuals are beautiful trash. She want to be on drugs. She want to smoke. She want to eat things and put things in her body. You know what I mean? That'll bring down her markability. She wants to continue to, uh, she don't want something that's authentic. She wants something that is fraudulent. She still want to clown. You know, beautiful trash. She don't want discipline. She don't want structure. She don't want knowledge. And what did the word of God teach us? He, he that hated instruction is brutish. You look up the word brutish. Brutish ain't nothing but another word for stupid. So she that doesn't want instruction, she that does not want structure, she that does not want to be obedient to the man that's presiding over, man, this is somebody that's stupid. This is beautiful trash. 
and I was teaching and preaching that game with the anointing of the game. And this one particular woman, she was just in her feelings. She just couldn't even listen to anything that I was saying. She's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you said that. And that's so wrong. And, oh, oh, God. Just totally, the emotions had us so wrapped up and tied up and entangled up. The game couldn't even come through. Couldn't even come through. But I understand why the game hit her the way that it did. Because, you know, it's a lot of women, man, that's attractive, man. But I told you the most attractive thing to me is when you know how to use the two ears on the side of your motherfucking head and be obedient. I don't. I could give a less fuck how big your booty is. You having an ass that's big enough to fuck up a toilet and some nice thighs and titties and a pretty face, that's cool. But if you don't know how to use the two ears on the side of your head, if you don't know how to, as the scriptures say, be swift to hear and slow to speak, if you don't know how to do that, you're not attractive. I've been telling you that if she can't give me what I want, then I don't want her. It's, it's as simple as that. Why do you want a woman, you know what I mean, that won't give you what you want? I don't want no woman that can't give me what I want. That's a waste of time. And even though I'm, uh, I'll be over here, of course, talking about this pimping and talking about this game, I mean, even though we were in different lanes, Kev was pretty much saying the same thing. He was telling you that a high value man, a man of standards, a man that has reached a certain plateau in life, you can't provide what he wants. So why the fuck would he want you? Simplicity. What was the argument? What is the debate about that? But you have these bitches wishing upon a star. It's the whole wishing up on a star thing. You know, even though I'm 40 years old and I got eight kids, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm just going to have this man. It's just like the conversation you just heard when the woman said, well, I just feel, what I tell y'all about that? I just, and I even correct you men when you say that. Well, you know, I feel like, I feel like, I say, hey man, stop doing that. That's what them bitches be doing. In every conversation, I just feel, or I feel, or I feel, and what do I teach you? What you feel is not all the time what's real. Bitches is governed by how they feel. Men is governed by what's real. That's the difference. We're governed by logic. We're able to mentally respond in the worst of circumstances. That's what separates you from that woman. And tough bad, difficult circumstances, you're able to mentally respond rather than emotionally react. As the scripture said in Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You don't want to be governed by your heart. You don't want to be governed by your feelings because no matter how infinite, brilliant minded that you are, if you're governed, if you're on some Carl Thomas emotional shit, you know what I mean? You're always going to be brought down. You can be a very knowledgeable person, but if you're governed by your feelings, man, you're a rival gang to wisdom. <clears throat> see that. Here we go. But, you know, um, Kev was pretty much, I was talking to pimping to the young pimps and hoes, and Kev was talking to the squares, but even though we're in different lanes again, he was pretty much saying the same thing that I've been saying. If you cannot give me what I want, why the fuck would I want you? I don't want you. You can't give me what I want. And then what's so sad is you want to make me feel bad because you're not what I want. <laughs> they try to make you feel bad because that ain't what I want. Evidently, that woman was in Kev's place she was in his apartment because that's what he wanted. Why wasn't a wife in there? Uh, let me speak in the language of simplicity. Um, hmm, that's not what he wanted. <clears throat> with his level of success, with his level of popularity, with the amount of money that Kev was having, if he wanted to get married, if that's what he wanted to do, um, he could have did it. But the reason why a wife wasn't in there 
And the reason why a square prostitute was in there, come on, we're going to call it 100 on the Symphony P channel. The reason why a square prostitute was in there, instead of basically, you understand me, a wife was in there because that ain't what Kev wanted. He could have had a wife in there if that's what he wanted. He was at a level. He had reached a position that he could have had anything that he wanted. And the wife wasn't there because that's not what Kev wanted. Simple and plain. That's not what he wanted. He could have had anything that he wanted. He is a, a high, the level, the uh, definition of what they got out there to be a high value man. He, he fits that. So he can have everything that he wants. And the reason why wife wasn't there, because in simplicity, he didn't want that. So why are you trying to make people feel bad or like, oh, my God, that's so sad. She barely knew him. She was a jump off. She was this. And I'm going I'm to keep it 100 because some people have been asking me, seeing is it foul play and this and this and this. Those of you that's been listening to this game for years. I'm about to say something without saying it. And I'm going to speak indirectly, but I'm going to speak very direct. And so those that's been listening to me for some quite, you know, a, a time, um, you know what I'm saying without saying it. When I first heard what happened um, instantly because of me being in the game, I thought that the drop. Yeah, I thought that that was used. Because it just had the perfect setup for it. And I don't mean to sound heartless, but by me being sinful, you know, I'm not moved by a bitch, you know, uh, calling, you know, what I mean, um, you know, oh, my God, he's about to... that don't move me. I, I don't mean to sound like that, but, you know, tears and a woman hollering that don't move me. See, when you've been around hoes. When you've been around prostitutes. You have witnessed some of the greatest Oscar award winning acting in your life. OK. So I'm not moved by tears. I'm not moved by that. And I'm not saying that I'm right. In my thinking, I'm not saying that this is what happened. I'm just saying that this is the, my thoughts. You know, so I thought that the drop and you can fill in the blanks. But I thought that that was used within that situation. <clears throat> the pimpin' know what I'm saying without me saying it. And somebody might say, "Oh no, sin! That couldn't have been. That couldn't have been used because, you know, uh, we we heard the 911 call again. I am not moved by a bitch crying. I am not moved by. I mean, shit. That's." I mean, an actress, you know, uh, a, a, a motherfucker that got a little game about themselves, that's actually the right thing to do. That's how you deceive motherfuckers into thinking that the drop wasn't used. You know what I mean? Some of y'all like, what the fuck? You know? But, yeah, just to keep that all the way 100, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Now, y'all know, ever since I've been in the game, I've been against that because money is not my, uh, that's not, that's not the main, that's not, like, if somebody can die, I'm not into tricks dying. All right? I'm not into tricks dying. I'm not, if, if I got to use that, in order to have watches and more money, then, you know, then fuck those watches and that more money if somebody's going to die. You know, I'm not sending nobody to hell. I'm not, in, I'm not on that. It's not that worth to me. It's not worth that much to me, no. So that, ga that particular game was never part of my pedigree. It was never you know, in my arsenal. I never utilized that particular uh, game. No. If anything, you know what I mean? I was taught and I used the drag game, but I never used that game. Everything was always verbal with me. Anything that could be used while Ho was on a date with a trick, 
you know, uh, to basically, you know, knock him out to do all of that. I wasn't with all of that because what you have to understand, everybody's body responds differently. All right. So there's been some girls, uh, you know, I, and I ain't going to mention, I ain't going to speak too much on that, but it was a situation in Miami and the broad had basically, you know, used the, you know what, on the date and the trick just died. You know, he died instantly. You know, man, you have to understand that everybody, some tricks, they knock out from it. They just go to sleep. And then some tricks, you know what I mean? They instantly die. So, you know, um, by, the, by, the, by them people not really knowing Kev's place like that, who's to say that, you know what I mean? Like, man, is it watches that's missing? Is it is it anything that was viable in the place that's missing? You know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it 100 with you. You don't know. It might be some. Uh, it might have been some. You know, watches missing. But who can? Who can? Because the way Kev lived his life, who can go in there and say that this is missing and that valuable thing is missing and this is missing or this is missing or or that is missing? Nobody. So it, if you really think about it, it was like the the best thing to do in that situation. You know? So, like I said, because I am what I am, I can't say what I want to say, you know, not on no damn internet, but those of you that's been listening to my game for quite a while, and then the things that I abstained and refrained from doing, you know, because money just wasn't, the world to me, if somebody can die from that, I just never did that. I never sent women out to do that. You will never hear no woman telling you that when sinful sent me, he sent me with the drop. You know, no, mm -mm. never was a part of my game, man. You know, but I might be wrong and I hope that I'm wrong, but I can't deny that that was the first thing that came to mind when I heard about Kev dying. I said, man, wait a minute. He just met the bitch. And then, wait a minute, just meeting the bitch. Brings the bitch back. Then I seen the bitch. I was like, oh, God damn it. You know? And then they, t you know, with the whole, but seeing she's a nurse. And, whoop, man, you guys are so fucking square and so green to the game. But, you know, hey, like I said, I ain't going to do too much on this internet, but that's the first, to the pimping, that's the first thing that came to my mind. First thing. You know, there's a pick of her. Damn, Clyde, where you been? <laughs> you talking about there's a pick of her. Damn, where you been, man? You really must only watch, yeah, you you just pretty much probably only watch our, our channel. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's pictures floating around. You know? Let me see. Broke. Yeah, I already spoke on that. But again, you know, uh, I just say this to you guys. Um, as a trick, if you're a trick, all right? Uh, cause that's one thing I will say, uh, for Kev too. Another thing for you tricks to learn from Kev. The reason why Kev was never caught in any scandals prior to dying. The reason why he never got, you never heard about Kev being in no mess. You never heard bitches coming out with a Kevin Samuels, you know, story, you know? Uh, it's because Kev was well calculated. He was disciplined, man. He really was. You know, he wasn't, of course, people don't try to paint him as this individual that didn't have it together and all of that. Uh, actually, he was very well put together. 
And that's the reason why you didn't have any Kevin Samuels uh, scandal stories and, and, and things like that. No. You didn't have bitches coming out. Oh, Kevin Samuels raped me. You know what I mean? You didn't have a, oh, well, this is how he, you, you didn't have any of that. Because Kevin knew that he was in a position of power and he was being watched at all times. Anything that he said or did, you know, around a woman could, you know, it could potentially hurt him. Kevin knew this, you know, which is another reason why he could not, you know, just get involved in a marriage. Like, I'm just listening to these people. And again, these guys sound just like these bitches. They're not realistic. You're not being realistic, man. So I'm about to just rush into a, a, a like, what? Like, what are you saying? The man has only been rich for two seconds. He ain't got a, he don't got even five years under his belt. What are you saying? I just expected more wisdom to come from people who are in their 50s, who have degrees and things like that. I was expecting to hear something that actually made sense, but no, that doesn't make sense, sir. But yes, Kev, uh, you know what I mean? Beyond just the uh, appearance and beyond just holding women uh, accountable, he held you men accountable too. And that's one thing that these women are not bringing up. The fact that Kev did not just shine a light on the women, he first was talking to the men. The only people that, you know, thought that he was talking just only to women are new booty ass people. But he was actually talking to the men first, holding the men accountable before he even brought any type of accountability to the women. But they don't want to shine a light on that because it's totally contrary to the false narrative that they're conveying to the people. Kevin was telling the guys to be realistic. You know, man, you can't be a fat, out of shape guy, you know what I mean, with no money. You know what I mean? That's it. And if you do just so happen to get a bad broad in this circle, you just slipped on a banana peel, once in a lifetime thing, or, you know what I mean, something. But nines out of 10, no, you're not going to get the bitch that you want or the bitches that you want. You know what I mean? And, and you're broke, you're fat, you're unattractive, you don't got no game about yourself. No, it's not going to happen. So before he was bringing that reality to women, he was speaking in the vernacular of truth with real in the, in the vernacular of realness to men first. It's just that when you speak to men, you know, they can, of course, mentally respond and say, you know what? This is kind of harsh. I don't like how this medicine tastes. But at the same time, this is good for me. So by me being a man, I'm not going to be so concerned about the fucking taste. I'm more concerned about the substance. I'm more, I'm more concerned about this helping me become better, uh, more beneficial and official. So if this is beneficial towards me, then yes, I'm going to take it. And yes, the men was taking the medicine. Yeah. It was because of uh, Kevin that a lot of y'all started studying and reading. Why? Because you seen the way Kevin was in the debates with these women. And what was he always using? Numbers. He was using stats. And he was tearing their ass up. I told y'all, my favorite uh, debate was on the uh, Fresh and Fit uh, podcast when they brought on Kevin and, you know, all them little arrogant, egotistical, airhead, square prostitutes were just on one accord, you know what I mean, just being arrogant, just laughing and all of that. Then when Kevin came on, the temperature changed. Kev came on there, now let's take big bank, take little bank. You know what I mean? I instantly started laughing. But he two day ass up. You know? And you can only do that, my guy. You have to read. You have to study. You know, you have to study. You have to read. Another reason why Kev was so big is because he studied the analytics to a T. He knew what time to go live, the best time to uh, do this. You know what I mean? Uh, who's watching me? 
You know what I mean? At this particular time, Kevin had that shit down to a science. He was a scientist at this YouTube shit. Yo said he was arguing with her on the last IG live. And hold on. And what if it wasn't a robbery but uh, a hit? Um, I'm a, like I said, I, I'm not gonna get into all that. You must understand that uh, I'm a, uh, I'm a criminal that's criminal minded, so I won't be in, uh, you know, getting in. Con that's for you squares to do, you know, trying to be uh, detective and all of that shit. You know what I mean? That's on you. Uh, but I, I I I actually said it without saying it. Uh, that was my thoughts uh, concerning what had happened and the crying and all of that shit. Oh, my God. She was really trying to help him. You know, I, I like I said, you know, I, I don't mean to sound heartless, but that didn't move me. That didn't move me at all. You know, I still kind of pretty much think of what I think. And until it's revealed, until the um, autopsy come back and they reveal what he died from. I'm pretty much sticking to my guns because I didn't have bitches lie to me about everything. So, you know, that, that don't mean anything. You see, when you been in my position and women have lied to you about their mama dying, when women have put it on their kid, you know what I mean? Put it on their, I put that on my kid's soul. You know, when you didn't deal with lies at that particular degree, you know, um, you, you, you pretty much, you're not moved by tears. You're not moved by yelling. You're not moved by that. You know? So, um, yeah, like I said, I know I'm, I sound heartless when I say that, but I didn't give a fuck for her crying and, you know, doing all that shit. I'm not moved by that. I won't be moved until I find out, you know, what Kev died from. And when that's revealed... And hopefully I'm wrong. I'm hoping that I'm completely wrong. But as of right now, though, that's my thought. Yeah, that's my thought on uh, on that. You know, that's another reason why, you know, um, I keep telling you guys, you know, even for you, uh, you guys, this uh, tricks, you know, Cause I always tell the whole man, you know, you got to be watchful. You need to be, you got to control that date from the beginning, the middle, and to the end. You know, yeah. But even for you tricks, you guys, this client, you got to be watchful, man. You might be with a broad that's endeavoring to seduce and reduce you for everything that you got. And the only reason why you're gonna be able to maintain what you got is if you be watchful. You got to have game about yourself, you know, and just like we got veteran hoes, we got veteran tricks, you know, for uh, Kev was a veteran trick. He was a seasoned trick. So I, I, I don't know, man. I was just ex I'm expecting more. But like I said, I just see how um, things play out, you know, because a, a veteran trick, a seasoned trick. You know, got to be watchful. He know that if he bring, you know what I mean, a, a prostitute, hoe, thief, whatever in his place, you know what I mean, to put all the uh, valuable things, you know what I mean, away. And especially not even, but see, like I said, I, I now taught you guys, and I'm not going to give too much game, but I just, you know, niggas get mad, but I just say this. I always taught you guys that in the in the world of pimping and hoeing, um, a lot of hoes end up coming on the greatest licks that can ever be gotten. Not by saying I'm a hoe, you know what I mean? But just like my brother, uh, Andre Taylor, said years ago that the master pimp is the master square. Well, he spoke on the master pimp. I'm telling you about the master hoe. And the master hoe is the master square. The reason why, you know, you're able to get away with everything that this man has, you know, potentially, is the fact that he doesn't know that you're playing offense. And if a man don't know that you're playing offense, he ain't going to play defense. Why? Because he don't think that you're playing offense. So he's not going to put a defense mechanism up 
if he don't think that you play an offense, the moment that you announce that you're a hoe or, uh, uh, you know, or anything like that, of course he's going to uh, hide everything. Of course he might not bring you to his place. But if you conduct yourself, you know, like a square and you have, you, and if you can speak fluently and eloquently pertaining to that particular profession that you're professing that this your profession, you know what I mean? You might say, I'm in the medical field or I'm in this uh, life or this is my lifestyle. And if you know how to, um, you know, eloquently represent yourself in that field and say, yeah, I do this, I do this, and uh, I got this going on and, and this and this and that, then the trick going to believe that you're really a square. And what is he going to do? He's going to let his guard down and he's going to treat you just like, you're a fucking square that's just a groupie. Like, oh, man, oh, this is just a fine-ass square that's just another fan or a groupie of mine. And what are you going to do? You're going to sit up there and bring her to your place of comfort. You're going to bring her to your residence. Why? Because you don't think that you're in the house with the devil. You don't think that you're in the house with a thief. You don't think that you're in the house, you know what I mean, with a hoe. You think that you just in the house with a motherfucking, you know what I mean, just a, a badass square with a big-ass booty that's just been watching all your motherfucking live videos. So I'm just about to reside and abide, you know what I mean, in some good little young pussy and shit because this bitch, she just, she just a fan. Yeah. You watch all my lives. So, you know, I'm thinking, you know, a motherfucker might be just be thinking they bringing a groupie. Like, oh, my God, I love that. And then when you said this and, oh, my God, I can't believe it's you. And so, you know, what I mean, you might be thinking you bringing, you know, a groupie home, man. You didn't you didn't put the devil in your house. <laughs> Literally, you know. So, um, yes, that's always been it. Like I said, I ain't going to speak too much, but always remember that, you know, for the ladies that's listening, you know, I already know y'all done picked it up, but even for the fellas, you know, I mean, game recognized game. When a motherfucker don't know you playing offense, they ain't going to play defense. Why? Because they think that you're a complete square. I didn't know that you was a hoe trying to score. You know, man, like I said, if a motherfucker announced that shit verbally, instantly the trick is preparing. Like, okay, I got to get rid of this watch and, you know, I mean, I, I'm a had this amount of money, I'm going to put my cards up or any of that. But, you know what I mean, if a motherfucker think, you know what I mean, that you're a square, he ain't going to do all of that. Why? Because he think that you're just an honest, straight up and down square. Let me see. Definitely, if the bitch knows she's doing a uh, main championship. I don't know what, bro. Dang, you preach a simple good game right now. Um... That's just reality, man. It hurts that, uh, and see, you see your favorite candy. You see what uh, baby girl just said. Divine said too too much for him. Yeah, I ain't going to, like I said, P, I ain't going to speak too much. But that was the first thing that came to my mind, man. I said, God damn. I hope bro didn't sit up there and go out to that. And that's why I was trying to sit up there and lace up. O'Shea's boots, because you already know O'Shea be hard with the tricking. Going hard with the tricking. You know? And you already know when a man's dick is alive, he's brain, he's brain dead. That's what the one thing I've been telling y'all. This ain't see, this is new to a lot of y'all, but my day ones, you know, y'all know the teachings. When a man's dick is alive, when his dick is alive, he's brain dead. It don't matter if he went to Harvard. It don't matter if he went to Stanford. It don't matter what degrees he got. It don't matter how intelligent, you know, he may seem. When a man's dick is alive, he is brain dead. I'm about to st practice tricking right now. <laughs> Shout out to my brother. You know, when a man, when a man, you know what I mean, is when his dick is alive, he's brain dead. So it don't matter where a man graduated from. It don't matter like, oh my God, you know what I mean? I I I, I know that this because he's he's he went to this school and he it don't matter. When a man is governed by the spirit of tricking, when he's governed by the spirit of lust, when he's governed by the lust of the eyes, 
the lust of his, the lust of his flesh. It don't matter what school he, it don't matter how many people he had live. It don't matter none of that at that particular time. So you guys on the outside, you might be like, oh my God, how could, how could he allow that to happen? Or, you know what I mean? Oh, he should have did this or should have did that. You niggas ain't keeping it real. Again, when a man's dick is alive, he's brain dead, man. You niggas, I've been seeing you niggas go live and speaking on this subject. Y'all ain't keeping it 100. You niggas ain't living for God. You niggas ain't saved. You niggas ain't uh, preachers. You, you, no. And man, I forgot to turn the volume down. That's why when my notification hit 20%, a lot of y'all got bounced out. You know what I mean? I forgot on this phone, when you got the volume turned all the way up, when that 20% notification come in, boy, it just be kicking y'all ass out. <laughs> you know, I keep forgetting that. All those Red Bulls. It's a, well, I just say this. I don't think it was that, but I do think that that didn't help. Like, according to my belief on what happened, and with that shit that he, he puts in his body, collaborated with it, yeah, I don't think that that helped. But no, I don't think that it was the Red Bull, like the main thing that just, I, I've been seeing it. He been dying from the Red Bull. And that did cross my mind. But you know what I mean? Like I said, the main thing was that drop. Yeah. My people know what I'm saying without me saying it. You know. That's what I believe what happened. And until they reveal what he died from, um, that's what I believe. You know, but like I said, you niggas have not been keeping this shit real on this goddamn YouTube. Y'all been sitting over there exalting yourselves and trying to make yourselves greater than Kevin when you haven't been keeping it real. You trying to make yourself polish yourself and make yourself like you more intelligent, you more wiser. When the truth is, if your dick alive, you're going to be brain dead too. When a man's dick is alive, he's brain dead. Don't matter how much education, no matter how dignified he is or how wise he seems, when a man's dick is alive, ladies, he's brain dead. He becomes your own personal ATM machine, and all you got to do is put in the PIN number, G-A-M-E. G-A-M-E, that is the pin number to seduce and reduce him for every dime that he has. G-A-M-E, any man that is bound by the spirit of lust, any man that is bound by the spirit, you know what I mean, of tricking, you know what I mean, not only could he be broken, you know, for every dollar that he has, he can be broken for his life. He can be broken for his status. He can be broken for his marriage. He can be broken for anything that's valuable. Why? Because when a man's dick is alive, he's brain dead. He's not thinking up to par. He's not thinking at his highest capacity. He's moving in the spirit of lust. And whenever a man is moving in the spirit of lust, his intelligence cannot be manifested to the highest degree. It will not be displayed to the highest degree. No, his intelligence is being hindered. Why? Because his motherfucking everything is being surrendered to the lust of his flesh. You know? Yeah. So, again, man, um, you know, of course, like I said, from appearance to intelligence to elegance, you know what I mean? Kevin is a fine example on what a man should be. Now, all of these uh, frailties and capacities where he was coming short in, that don't do nothing for me. That just proved that he's a human being. There's capacities that I'm coming short in. I got frailties. I have character flaws. You know, I'm not a perfect man. I ain't shit. <laughs> and if I ever become that, which I think is the shit, it's only because the grace of God allowed me to become that. You know what I mean? But just in reality, man, no. But, yeah, all of these people going live and having five and eight hour lives just to discuss a human being being a human being. That's not proving anything. That's just proving that he's a human. 
That's not proving anything. That's not taking away from his brilliance. That's not taking away from his intelligence. That's not taking away from his elegance. That's not taking away from his diligence. You know what I mean? To be a successful black man. You guys, your hatred for Kev is just com giving confirmation to the information that he's been conveying within his videos about, <laughs> about women like you guys. That's all that behavior did. That's all of these hate messages, all of these bitter messages did was confirm his message to these men. All you did was help and support his message. You damn buffoon, you idiot. You didn't sit up there and minimize the message. You confirm the message with your behavior, idiot. The men, the men are saying, damn, Kev was right about every damn thing that he said when they seen you doing what you was doing. Hold on, let me move this right quick. I can't see uh, all of the, uh, the comments. Hold on. Okay, cool. It be, I don't know why it does that. It'll get to a point where the uh, the comments, uh, I'm thinking that the comments is coming in and uh, I'm not seeing the new ones that's coming in. I'm still stuck up at the top. So sometimes I got to hit my phone, scroll down uh, at times. But again, you know what I mean? It's a lot of individuals, man. You had guys uh, when Kev... You know what I mean? Blew up. You had individuals. I seen guys like, you know, Steve the Dean. I seen people like Taz. I seen a lot of guys, you know, uh, of course, the saint in the center. You know what I mean? His, uh, which, you know, it's really the ain't in the beginner. But, um, you know, you have guys like that that pretty much was exalting themselves saying that, you know, they were better and they can do this and all of that. But no, if you go to the uh, Satan the Sinners uh, page, you'll see that his biggest video on his whole channel is talking about Kevin. And that's not a diss, but it's a diss. Uh, his biggest video on this channel is talking about Kevin. It's not talking about him. It's not talking about his businesses. It's not talking about, you know, uh, the lame discussions that he be having with them bitches with the other little lame dude that he be with. It's talking about Kevin. That's why the views are there. That's why the likes are there. Because he was talking about somebody that it was more important than him. That's why that's there. You know, and as far as Steve the Dean, I don't have no problem with Steve. You know what I'm saying? But... Um, of course, Steve had said some things, but people have to understand that the reason why Kev blew past all of us is because he worked harder than all of us. So people might have their own little narrative and, you know, what I mean, they might, you know, get in their feelings and all of that. But he was he deserved everything that he had. Everybody, he don't deserve or they had that attitude like Kev didn't deserve you know what I mean? That position. When he had put in the work to have that position. He deserved everything that he got while he was here. And he deserves the acknowledgement for his accomplishments and, you know, um, the effort, the diligence that he put in to be where he was. He deserves acknowledgement, you know, for that. And that's why we're giving him acknowledgement right now. That's why. You know, so listen again, you know, what I mean, and like I said in another video, the reason why Kev was able to maintain that position and just breeze through these niggas, he never acknowledged them. Acknowledgement is encouragement. When you acknowledge your adversary, you encourage your adversary to get into a continuity of displaying and conveying negative negativity and hatred towards you. You know, acknowledgement is empowerment. You know what I mean? Your enemy might have a platform that ain't getting no views, no type of spotlight at all. But because you acknowledged your enemy, because you decided to come down from the heavens and acknowledge your enemy, now your enemy now has a multitude of people that are now looking, 
you know, at him simply because you acknowledged your enemy. See, they called Kevin gay. They said that Kevin, you know, owed child support. They said that his wife was getting ready to, his ex-wife was getting ready to expose him. They said that his daughter was getting ready to say some things. It was so many rumors that was coming out. They tried to make Kevin Gay uh, saying that it was a, a man sleeping in the bed. The nigga that was sleeping in the bed looked like he was from Bounty Hunter Bloods. The nigga that was sleeping in the bed, you know what I mean, looked like, you know what I mean, he was from motherfucker uh, uh, Hoover. <laughs> You know, like that man that was in that bed that they were trying to put Kevin with. I was like, man, man, if y'all don't knock it off, man, Kev having way too much money. I was like, why they, why, why are y'all doing that? They took a nigga from the, hey, bounty hunter, hey, bounty hunter. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. You know what I mean? Why y'all take, you? if you ain't never seen that before, go watch that video. Just put in, hey, bounty hunter. You know what I mean? From the bounty hunter bloods. And look at the way them niggas look. That's exactly why, what the nigga that was sleeping on that couch, that's what he looked like. Hey, bounty hunter. Hey, bounty hunter. He, he, it looked like he was from that. I was like, so wait a minute. Kev got a nigga that's fresh out of prison and an old nigga at that, just dusty, living in the crib. I was like, come on, man. Y'all don't think. You know, you thought it was, cl yeah, I can't lie. It did. It kind of looked like Clyde. Shout out to that boy Juan. Hold on. Damn, I can't. It ain't clicking up. But yeah, I was like, damn, why they got? Why is they doing the homie like that? Why is they doing the homie like that? Why is they sitting over there? Kev sitting over there with one of the parus sleeping on the couch. <laughs> why? Why is y'all acting like that? I'm like, this old big swole ass, dark motherfucking game banging looking ass nigga. You know what I mean? Why y'all do that? They, they tried to make it seem like Kev was just teaching. And while he was live teaching, his man, his man just laying on the couch. You know what I mean? Just laying down. Like, let me know when you get off live, baby. You know, like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, these motherfuckers is crazy. The dude look like one of the guys that was in the Banging on Wax album cover. And y'all just put him with Kev. Man, y'all wrong for that shit. I'm like, these guys, they really tried to make Kev gay. This is wrong on all levels. Got this old dusty ass nigga just laying down talking about that's his man. He accidentally showed his man. I was like, boy, they was really looking for a flaw. They was looking for anything to call this man gay. But watch this. Kevin never acknowledged him. Never acknowledged him. When we found out that Kev, you know what I'm saying, uh, with them pictures that looked like, you know what I mean, he was in the uh, world-class wrecking crew with Dr. Dre and them back in the day. When we seen them pics, you know what I mean, as funny as they were and everybody was roasting. Kev never came down from the heavens and acknowledged nothing. You had the, uh, this woman who always, oh my Lord, she always got the camera all in her face, Jesus. Lord, 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 Lord. And she's not an ugly woman, but she just has the camera all in her face. And I'm like, God damn, shit. You know, you're an awkward looking motherfucker. You can't just be putting the camera all in your face, baby. But this bitch, I'm not even going to say her name. She used to make like 10 videos a day. Like if you put Kevin's name in, all her videos would just be popping up. I'm talking about she hated Kev with a passion. With a passion. But even with all of them hate videos, Kev never acknowledged even when, again, even when your boy, the ain't, the ain't in the beginner, even when he uh, put up the picture on some clout chasing shit and was talking shit the whole time, Kevin never acknowledged. 
when Jap went bad on them. You know what I mean? When Jap had set up there and acted a fool, you know what I mean? And uh, went off on Kev uh, uh, on you know whose platform. I ain't going to say that nigga's platform. Kev never acknowledged. He never acknowledged. Like I said, it's so much to learn from Kev. Because you already know some of us in that position, we definitely not only would acknowledge the motherfuckers, we would have been roasting, verbally crucifying. We would have been sitting over there, you understand me, going back and forth and everything. Some of us, some of us would have, some of y'all would have ended up being like uh, Kwame Brown and went from having 30 some thousand, 40 some thousand people watching you while you live to now struggling to have a thousand people watching you. All because you arguing arguing with niggas that got 300 subscribers by the grace of God. Niggas that's going live in their mama's basement. You you sitting over there, a retired NBA player, you know what I'm saying? A retired NBA player, but you sitting over there going uh, live, going back and forth with motherfuckers that got 300 subscribers by the grace of God. Like I said, there's a lot to be learned from Kevin Samuels. Now, just imagine if Kevin was like Kwame Brown and was responding to everybody and anybody that just said some things. Because, you know, he, I, I, I just know without a shadow of a doubt, you know what I mean? His fire would have been stopped. But another reason that kept Kevin, I got to keep repeating this, and I know I'm going to say it. Again and again, Kev stayed focused on being focused. Kev stayed focused on the message. No matter what was said, no matter what was done, no matter how he was criticized, no matter how he was lied on, no matter how so many people came on one accord, individuals that he used to go live with, individuals that had no problem with him until he started having it his way, until he started having too much popularity, too much prosperity, too much success, until he got on Vlad TV, until he did No Jumper. They didn't have no problem with him until he just kept going viral and viral and viral and now having over a million subscribers. See, what you have to understand is some of y'all got some people in your life that you think that's your friend, that you think that really fuck with you. But if you would start releasing and manifesting the power that God put in you, you wouldn't even have them individuals no more. Your so-called friends would turn into adversaries. Your so-called friends would turn into haters. Your so-called family, you know what I mean, would turn into your worst enemy. If you would just release and manifest the greatness that's within you. The things that God put in you, they, can't, they couldn't even stand, you know what I mean, around you. If you just start shining. If you start shining, you know, that light within you will start revealing, you know what I mean? Because when you turn the light on, you're able to see some things that you couldn't see when you was in, you, you weren't able to see it when you was in the dark. But see, when you start shining, now you're able to see things that you wasn't able to see. And now that you're shining, you can basically smell the cheap perfume of jealousy, you know what I mean, of these individuals that you once had around you. I'm telling you, once you start shining, once you start doing your thing, young woman, I'm telling you, older woman, I'm telling you, some of them women that you got in your circle, your circle going to get smaller and smaller. Once you start doing your thing, once you start shining, once you get you a man, once you sit up there, you understand me, and get blessed, once you stop obtaining and maintaining success, them bitches ain't going to be able to be your friend. I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that. As soon as your success gets established, them fake ass friendships going to be abolished. They're not going to be able to stand. They're not going to be able to stand. You know what I mean? And... There were some people that was cool with Kev. They ain't had no problem with Kev. You know what I mean? But once he started shining, it became too much of a problem. Way too much of a problem. You must understand that in every lifestyle, you know, when you're the most clouded, when you're the individual, you know what I mean, that's clouded up, what am I saying? You're the most popular. It's a problem. 
in the pimp game, I've seen pimps make up lies. I've seen pimps criticize. I've seen pimps verbally crucify Bishop Don Magic Juan for things he said and did. And it's not because they genuinely are disagreeing with him. It's just that by him being the most popular pimp in the lifestyle of pimping and hoeing, they're looking for any flaw, anything, you know what I mean, that they can see to get at him because he has all the attention. When you look at the Crips, you know what I mean, even on Kev Mac, you know what I mean, platform, or even on uh, 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 what they call a gangland, you have some Crips that's even speaking ill or trying to criticize Tookie. Why? Because Tookie, you know what I mean, was... To the world, when you thought about Crippin', you thought about Tookie. So in every walk of life, when you're the one that has the popularity, when you're the one that's getting the most attention, you will receive hatred. You will receive, you know what I mean, like from people that you was like, man, this supposed to be my nigga. This supposed to be my friend. Look at the incomparable Minister Malcolm X, you know. There were so many brothers in the nation of Islam that was jealous of Brother Malcolm. Why? Because he had the most attention. That's why. He was the spokesperson. He was the mouthpiece of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And when he made those speeches, you know, the honor, even though he was saying the Honorable Elijah Muhammad you know what I mean? Pretty much like a million times before, a lot of times before he even gave praise to Allah. His messages were so profound and meaningful that, you know, even though he it gave acknowledgement to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the people are seeing Brother Malcolm. So they praised and exalted Brother Malcolm and the brothers within the nation of Islam could not take it and they could not stand it. They used to have admiration for you, but now they have hatred for you because you're getting the most attention. I can show you from carnality to spirituality. Reality is when you are getting too much attention, the men are going to be jealous of even the men are going to be jealous of you. Even the men are going to sit up there and take up uh, these bitch traits. And as the scripture says, jealousy is the rage of a man. So you got individuals you know what I mean? That uh, are up all night speaking on a dead man. He's harmless. He can't hurt them. He can't even voice his opinion no more. But his words still reside and abide in the location of the small minds of these people. And that small location called these people's minds, Kev's words still reside and abide in those small minds. They can't stop thinking about it. They can't, they can't stop criticizing. They can't stop displaying and conveying hate. DJ Envy, you know what I mean? Can't stop being a bitch-ass nigga, you know, towards Kevin. Why? Because, you know, when Kev responded, he did it so classy. He did it, you know what I mean, so, you know what I mean, uh, elegant. You know, DJ Envy couldn't do nothing with it. And even when he told the lie that he told on Kev, you know, Kev sat up there and put that out and was like, hey, man, you know, don't be di disrespecting my character, man. You know what I mean? I can get on the phone, my Lord, you know what I mean? Woo, 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 You know? But I'm just telling you, man, you know what I mean? Uh, that can be you. If you start manifesting everything that God put in you, expect the same type of hatred. Expect the same type of negativity. Because when you're getting too much attention, when you're getting too much spotlight, especially in this era, you're not going to have many friends. No. You know what I mean? All of that, I love you and all of that. No. That's all that shit going to stop. Because like I said, nobody had a problem with Kevin Samuels until he went viral. Nobody had a problem with Kevin Samuels until he started blowing up. You didn't see no uh, diss videos towards Kevin. Wasn't nobody thinking about Kevin. You know what I mean? Wasn't nobody thinking about Kev. You know what I mean? Everybody, when, he, when we even used to have the uh, Sunday Rumbles, 
Well, we used to have it. Y'all going to drop again because now it didn't drop to uh, 10%. So I'm expecting y'all numbers to drop. But, you know, even at O'Shea's channel, when we used to have the Sunday Rumbles, you know what I mean? They was cordial with Kev. They always spoke to Kev. They always gave Kevin acknowledgement. It wasn't until, you know, Kevin started, you know what I mean, uh, reinvent he, uh, after he reinvented himself, you know what I mean, and really put in the work and start going viral and viral and viral time after time, you know, and getting too much attention to where it became a problem. Now it's a problem. It's a problem now. Because they're not getting half the attention that he's getting. You know, and some started before him. Now it's a problem. You know? But one thing you can learn from Kev, Kev kept his mouth quiet through the hatred, through the bitterness, through the negativity, and through the lies the brother kept on mentally responding and not emotionally reacting. He never acknowledged them because he could have turned little guys into big guys if he acknowledged them. But no, he stayed an elephant and he treated flies like flies, man. No acknowledgement. Not going to acknowledge you. You know what I mean? He stayed in his position. He didn't try to, you know, become a comedian. He didn't try to become a jester. When people made jokes, he stayed serious. He stayed poised. He stayed professional. You even heard Dre when Dre said that he was going to come on the show. KF seeing that Dre was trying to come on the show, he didn't even, uh, you know, allow an opportunity for them to even have discord in front of the people. Kev shut that down, didn't even bless it. It's a lot to learn from Kev. what I tell you? It's a lot to learn from Kev. That's why he was able to maintain his fire, maintain his drive, maintain his spotlight. Why? Because he didn't give any, any acknowledgement to the hatred, any acknowledgement to the bitterness. And what did I tell you? When they're giving you positivity on the right, when they're giving you praise and worship service on the right, if they're giving you too much acknowledgement, too much, you know what I mean, praise and worship over there, don't you be distracted by that. You know what I mean? Don't be distracted by the praise and worship service on the right. And don't be uh, distracted, you know, by the negativity, the lies and the bitterness and hatred on your left. You stay focused on being focused on the message. People are attacking you, you know what I mean? Because they don't have a message. Kev stay focused on the message, man. And like I said in the last video, I got to say it again. You know what I mean? If Kev can come back right now, he wouldn't sit up there and respond to none of them. He wouldn't respond back to Boyce Walkins. He would not be sitting over there trying to go uh, back and forth with a Cynthia G. He wouldn't, if his Kev can come back uh, from uh, to life right now, he wouldn't be sitting over there going back and forth with no uh, Nyla said. He wouldn't be sitting over there going back and forth, uh, you know what I mean, with a, a, a Boyce Walkins. You know what I mean? He wouldn't be going, he wouldn't be doing that. If Kev can come back right now, he will get back right to back to his message. He wouldn't be trying to have a roast contest. He wouldn't be sitting over there uh, acknowledging, you know, I mean, the thousands of bitter, you know, black females that profess to be black women that were in common sections, you know, what I mean, having celebrations, you know, what I mean, about hearing about the, 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 his passing. He wouldn't even acknowledge them. He wouldn't acknowledge them. And that's a trait that we all, you know what I mean, can take. That's some game that we can all take. No acknowledgement. Treating, treating these niggas just like broke bitches. P, what you mean by that? Bitch ain't had nothing to offer. She didn't have nothing that was beneficial, so, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't official to me, so I didn't bless her with no conversation, no acknowledgement. She didn't have the development. She didn't have any type of improvement. She didn't have anything going on. So she couldn't get, get in my life. What I tell you, thinking like God. You know, you can't do what you want to do and make it into the kingdom of God. You know what I mean? You can't do what you want to do and make it in. And a bitch shouldn't be able to do what she want to do and make it in your life. It should be prerequisites. It should be standards that's up to the heavens, you know what I mean, that she got to fulfill to get in that. 
You know? Hold on, let me put that there. There we go. Yeah, that's how that's how kingdoms and empires and things, you know what I mean, get destroyed by just allowing, you know, uh, just anybody and everybody to come into your life. And I'm going to say this to you. Um, that go for me, that go for Kev, that go for anybody. Don't get into the spirit of idolatry. Don't start idolizing a person to the point where you can't see the error of their ways and learn from it. Don't don't have praise and worship service for a creature where you make the creature the creator, where you can't see the error of their ways. You can't see them as a proverb on what to do and what not to do. You know? Open your eyes. As, as the one prophet Elijah said to the other prophet Elisha, you know, Lord, open this man's eyes you know what I mean, that he may see. You need to have more spiritual discernment. Look past, you know, a pretty ass face. Look past a big ass. Look past them titties. You know what I mean? That's the enemy in female form trying to charm and disarm you and might be trying to charm and disarm you out your soul. So you're going to have to look past that physical flesh. You're going to have to look past big titties. You're going to have to look past glossy ass lips. You're going to have to sit up there and look past all of that. You know what I mean? Because you just might be getting ready to get seduced and reduced out your soul. You know? So, yeah, man. Don't just learn from Kev on what to do. You can look at Kev on what not to do as well. Like I told you, don't idol worship no man. Get the game from man. But don't make the man into your God. Don't make a creature into the creator. Don't do that. Don't do that with me. Don't do that with Kev. Don't do that with no preacher. Don't do that with no teacher. Don't do that with no YouTuber, motivational speaker. Don't do that with no flesh. Don't idolize no flesh. You get the game from flesh. You can get inspiration. You can get words of exhortation. But don't sit up there and make the creature into the creator. Because every time that you make the creature into the creator, you're going to fail every time. God going to show you that that creature is just a creature. God going to show you that that human being is just a human being. He just going to show you that that man is just a man. Might be a brilliant man, might be an intelligent man, but at the end of the day, it's still a man. So get the game by all means. Get some game. You know, get the game about yourself. Get out your feelings. For you guys, for you men, you know what I mean? We can't change that. Don't, don't waste too much time, you know, thinking about what you, you know, you can't change. Life going to move on. That's one thing that life is showing you. Life moves on with or without you. It's going to move. I'm going to die one of these days. And guess what life going to do? Keep moving on. The world ain't going to stop. People still going to be doing their thing. My mother didn't pass away. My grandmother didn't pass away. And one thing I've learned, you know what I mean, that the world keeps spinning. Things going to keep going on. You know what I mean? So live your life. Don't waste too much time, you know what I mean, worrying about, crying about things that you can't change. Redeem the time for the days of evil. You know what I mean? Utilize the time that you have and utilize it wisely. You know, preside over your time wisely, man. You know, and oh, yeah, uh, to people that ain't about nothing. Yeah, don't cast no pearls before swine. Be like Kev, man. No acknowledgement. You know, no acknowledgement. You should have that same mindset. If it's not benefiting me, you know, what I mean, if it's not adding to my income, if it's not being a blessing to my outcome, then why should I welcome, you know, what I mean, this into my life? No acknowledgement. None. No acknowledgement for anything that the enemy is endeavoring to bring me through any vessels, whether it be my family, so-called friends, YouTubers, any of that. I have to stay focused on being focused on what I'm endeavoring to do. I have a goal and I have to stay focused on the goal. I can't be distracted by too much positivity I can't be distracted by all the negativity. I can't be distracted by neither one. I have to stay focused on the goal. 
Stay focused on the goal. That's what you stay focused on. Person might say, how do I stay encouraged when I'm feeling discouraged? Stay focused on the goal. Remember what you are endeavoring to have. And remember that you can only get there by staying focused on the goal. You have to make daily sacrifices. It's just like when you go to the gym, you know the body that you want to have. You know, and it's going to be some days where you ain't going to feel like going to the gym. It's going to be some days where you feel like laying in the bed. It's going to be some days where you feel too sore, you know, but you got to press on. You know, you got to keep pressing and pressing and pressing and pressing on. You know, that's the only way that you're going to reach your goal is to stay focused. So in spite of what you're feeling, in spite of what you're going through, you know, in spite of a temporary situation, a temporary tribulation, what's to come can be better than what's being, but only if you stay focused. Stay focused on the goal. You know, stay focused no matter who lying on you, no matter what's going on, stay focused on the goal. That's what Kevin did. And that's the only reason why we're talking about him. That's the reason why he's the best definition of important right now. Why? It's because he stayed focused on the message. The man was being hated on every day. The man was being lied on every day. Individuals was going live every day, spreading false narratives. You had even a guy, another black man, you know, and it'd be your own people. It was a black man going live one time, you know what I mean? Putting up a video of Kev in a, uh, a store. And he was like, yeah, this Kev returning uh, uh, some items back. You know what I mean? Look look at this dude. He's returning the item back. I'm like, damn. And you went live. You took out time out your day. You know what I mean? To show a black man, you know, going live uh, to take something that he purchased back. Wow. Man, get it. You ladies, somebody get this man some pussy. Give, give him something to do. God damn. But they wanted him to fail so bad. They wanted him to fail so bad. They was praying fasting and hoping for this man's downfall, you know? And like I told you, everybody's against the black man, including the black man, everybody. Everybody's against the black man. It don't make no sense for us to be against us because we all that we got, but everybody is against the black man. We can't have nobody. If a man is too masculine, too prominent, too dominant, too infinite minded, you know what I mean? They're going to bring some type of scandal or he going to get uh, killed, assassinated or something because they don't want an example, you know, of what a man should be. Anything, You know, if he got too much elegance going on, it's going to be something. You know, always remember a nation that destroys himself. You know what I mean? The enemy don't got to destroy that. The enemy does not have to destroy a nation that destroys itself. We destroy ourselves. So, you know, the enemy ain't even got to waste their time trying to kill us because we kill us, whether we kill us with a mouth, our mouths or a gun or whatever. But, you know, we're destructive to one another. And, you know, with the things that that man said, whether you agree with him or not, because I didn't agree with everything that uh, Kev said. He didn't agree with everything that I said. What man agrees with everything that another man says? You know? But to wish a downfall on another man, you know, and, you know, I no, I don't have that in my system. I expect bitches to be bitches. But my God, when you see guys doing this, it, it's a icky feeling. It's like, damn, I expect these bitches to do this. But man, what you doing, fam? <laughs> but Kevin stayed focused on the goal, man. You know what I mean? So uh, whatever you're going through, always remember you know, this is an individual that went from this point to that point, and he only got there by staying focused. You got to stay. I don't know what your goal may be, but I know this. If you give acknowledgement to too much negativity, if you give too, uh, too much acknowledgement to lies and, and bitterness and things like that, and that's what you're focused on, instead of uh, staying focused on the goal, Staying focused on what you're endeavoring to accomplish, then you're not going to accomplish it. As a man thinking, so is he. So if you're thinking about things that have nothing to do, you know, with the goal, then 
you know, it's inevitable, man, that you're going to fail. You got to stay focused on being focused, you know? But uh, I ain't going to over talk y'all. I'm not like, man, when this nigga going to shut up? You know, I just wanted to sit up there, man. I, I, I had to get this out of the way. Of course, I'm not done. I got some other things I want to speak on. But, you know, uh, I appreciate you guys for rocking out with me, man. I appreciate you guys for staying up and rocking with me, man, for over three hours. Feel like it was only really an hour, but you guys been rocking with me, man, for over three hours, and I sincerely appreciate you. You know, thank you. You know, I appreciate all that, man. You know, but once again, man, uh, take heed to things that was uh, conveyed within this video, man, pertaining to Kevin, because there's so many things that you can take from him, young man. And like I said, you don't have to get involved in criminality. Here's somebody that was making drug kingpin numbers within a month, not doing anything contrary to the law, but just using his mind. And you can do the same thing. So listen, man, I appreciate all of you. Make sure that you uh, hit the like button. Make sure you uh, share this video for me. Uh, and blessings to everybody. Uh, I appreciate that, man. You know? Open up them phones. Man, it, Man, we've been up for over three hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? What What could you possibly what, open up the phone lines for what? We've been over here for three hours, man. Maybe I'll come back uh, later tonight. You know what I mean? We'll speak on uh, something else. But I appreciate you guys for enduring, uh, you know what I mean? Like listening to my ass, my crazy ass for over three hours, man. But I love you. I hope you live as long as you want and never want as long as you live. Everybody stay blessed. We out.